everyone. I know we're running a few minutes late. Welcome to Lock Beer Phenomenon number 143. Yowies are possible. Yes. Um, let's check the chat, shall we? I know I was running a few minutes late. Running a few minutes late. See, Icon was here. He says, wowie, zowie, it's a wowie. Yep. Yep. What the actual fuck? Yep. See, uh, JoJo's here, UK representing. Yeah, you guys. Uh... <clears throat> Missed out last night. It had to had to go late, you know, because... It's just, uh, it's getting too hot to do this, this early in the day. Um, I'm doing it today, but probably in the future, we'll be doing it two hours later because, um, you know, it's, I can't do it in the library, you know, and people be like, shut the hell up and, and looking at me strange. So it just wouldn't work out. I have to do it out in the van. Um, can't do it in McDonald's, you know, it's just, it's just not feasible to do it in those places where I can go to use the internet, but I can't do a live stream in those locations in the AC, but welcome Jojo. Welcome grasshopper. It's about for smoke. Better not be kissing on me. I'm dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous relative ocean ponds here. Welcome. Uh, Angel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Kiz, UK's in house tonight. Sleeping Beauty says, sweet intro. Thank you. And welcome. Uh, Tim Boy's here. Anyone that wasn't here last night? Um, Timmy Boy made a small contribution to the live stream last night and um it looked a little bit oh well, come on looked a little bit like like this oops and i lost it well never mind anyway that sunflower is a racist i accidentally x'd out of it it sucks when you got too many tabs open. Anyway, it was a funny clip. You watched last night's live stream. <laughs> welcome, Timmy boy. Raptor, welcome. Joe just says, I watched it today. No lock. Yeah. <clears throat> Still, my throat's uh, giving me hell. So, um, my, you know, might have some more. You know, fits of coughing. I'll try to mute. Um, just like there's something stuck right there. I assume it. It's trying to come up. You know. Hasn't been as bad today, but still. <coughs> so. <clears throat> Um, I, I kind of mentioned, you know, why I, I decided to do the Yowie thing, talk about the Yowie um, last night, but I'll repeat because a lot of people weren't here. Um, uh, Pat is making is making the assertion that he doesn't he doesn't believe that um, there can be a that he doesn't he. he he didn't use the word plausible, but it sounds like he feels like it's not. He feels like it's implausible that there can be an upright, you know, a, a hominid, a hom an undiscovered hominid in Australia. I forget the exact wording he did use, but basically that's what it amounts to. He doesn't believe that there can be a hom an undiscovered hominid in Australia. I think that there absolutely can be, and um, 
you know i'm not saying that there is but you know a lot of people have sightings of the owie and and uh a lot of australia is you know under pop you know not populated very well it's a, a vast area um people a lot of people think of australia is a big desert it's not an entirely a desert it has a lot of desert but it also has rainforest you know and mountains and stuff so it's you know it's got rivers i mean that's where the crocodiles live you know it's it's got some squatchy squatchy places it's got some squatchy places so i'm gonna you know i'm gonna start with the most scientific stuff and then we we might you know throw in a little the, some of some a little bit of more woo woo ish stuff because some of you know so the woo people some of them may not mean some of the things that they think are real may not be that that impossible so um you know the portal thing I, you know there there may be some possibilities there it's just that we haven't discovered any such thing and you know um and looking at that uh <clears throat> that that the, the 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 plane that disappeared which we'll talk about later on if y'all haven't seen this y'all ain't going to believe this shit um the videos look legit and if they are um there's some wild shit going on there's some wild shit going on so um so i'll start with uh i'll start with this try not to shut down my tabs Uh, come on. <coughs> uh, there we go. There we go. Ocean Pond says Plio Pliocene. Um, uh, hold on, let me get the comment up. Man. Pliocene origins are earlier for the Aussie Harry Man. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, possible. I, I think it, he could have, he could have, I think that, that, uh, the, 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 uh, an, an, I don't know, I, I, we call it Yowie, Hominid, Bigfoot, whatever we're going to call it. I don't know, I need to pick a word for it, but Sasquatch. I think Sasquatch is the way to Australia at any point in time either by accident or on purpose. Um, it could have been 10 years ago, could have been 10,000 years ago, it could have been 100,000 years ago. Um, you know, depending how far how far back Sasquatch diverged from the rest of us, you know, as a race of people, because like I've said many times on here before, I do not think they are a separate species. I think most likely they are the same species as us. And they're just a big hairy race of people. Let me change my layout. Boom. There we go. Much more better, right? Excuse my voice. It's all jacked up. So... You know, we could talk about a lot of different animals that have been transported from one continent to another over time, um, floating on, you know, mats of vegetation. You know, maybe they got, you know, uh, washed away in a river, washed out the sea, grabbed onto whatever they could find that was floating, a big log or whatever it is. And then, you know, now most such creatures, land-based creatures in that kind of scenario are going to die, obviously. But a few strong survivors do survive, have survived. We know for a fact they've survived. Um, you know, look at the, you know, if we want to look at, at Australia specifically, uh, Megalania, the, the giant monitor lizard that used to be there, 
that I hope they bring back because it looks like it was pretty freaking cool. I hope they find some DNA and bring it back. But at any rate, the the uh, Komodo dragon is closely related to it. The Komodo dragon is not in Australia, <laughs> it, but it somehow got off of Australia. And some people might argue, well, it's a lizard. It can swim a long way. Well, fine. Because, again, that's the thing. With a lot of these animals, people are going to say, well, it's this kind of animal. It's a totally different thing than a, than a primate. Well, fine. Here's primates. Here's primates. We'll stick to primates, shall we? Um, two primate lineages crossed the Atlantic millions of years ago. Now, you got to keep in mind, the Atlantic has been gradually widening over time. So it wasn't uh, quite as distant as it is today, but it's still a long damn way, right? So new fossil discoveries suggest a second group crossed about 35 million to 32 million years ago. Cause you, I mean, you got to ask how did the damn monkeys get here anyway? But, so this article explains this particular case. Um, four fossilized molar teeth excavated in Peru's Amazon basin come from a now extinct lineage of primates that rafted across the Atlantic Ocean from Africa and reached the inland site between around 35 million and 32 million years ago, researchers say. Until now, South American sites had yielded only fossils of primates ancestral to those inhabiting the continent today. Fossils from the same Peruvian site had previously suggested that ancestors of modern South American monkeys crossed the ocean from Africa by around 36 million years ago. The new discovery adds a second group of primate arrivals. The teeth closely resemble those of Parapathicids, a primate family that inhabited northern Africa from roughly 56 million to 23 million years ago, say the paleontologist Eric Seifert of the University of Southern California in Los Angeles and his colleagues. Like ancestors of living South American monkeys, Parapathicids must have made a sea crossing on vegetation mats created by storms, the scientists conclude in the April 10th science. Favorable ocean currents and a narrower Atlantic Ocean than today because of lower sea levels helped ancient primates float across the ocean. Still, the Atlantic probably was more than 1,500 to 2,000 kilometers wide when crossings occurred, the scientists say. The two primate lines adjusted well to a new continent traveling from where they landed in South America more than 4,000 kilometers to the inland Peruvian site, the researchers say. Seifert's group suspects both groups competed for resources until um, Eukaya Lipith uh, Lipithecus, the genus name given to the newly reported fossils, eventually died out. <clears throat> so there you have an example of primates that floated across the Atlantic, not because they built a boat, but because they got in a bad situation. Maybe they started with more than they landed with because they started eating each other. Who knows? But somehow they survived. Creatures will survive shit. So there you have it. I mean, that should be enough, right? I mean, pointing out the fact that uh, many types of animals, including these primates, have floated all the way across the Atlantic Ocean should settle this. It really should. <clears throat> Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee's here. Welcome. Um, everybody getting their highs and hellos to the chat peoples. User 
User 9234NWFE. What a completely bot-ish name that is. Saying if they can cloak, they, that didn't happen by evolution. Their, your comment doesn't make any damn sense in reference to what I'm talking about here. Uh, I, how, how, what what difference does it make if they could, if they could cloak? Now, cloaking is as best we can tell is bullshit. It's just bullshit claims that people make because they live in a fantasy land. <coughs> yeah, fantasy land. And if you're trying to refute evolutionary biology, evolutionary biology is a well-proven science. It's real solid. I mean, if you watch my channel and if, you know, or watch any of my, my back live streams, there are certain sciences I will go after pretty hard because they got flaws in them. Evolutionary biology is not flawed. It's pretty solid. Um, I know there's some creationists out there who you know, think they, they think they've got some real zingers in there, but they their flimsy attempts to discredit evolutionary biology are so mentally retarded that those people should be committed to an institution and not allowed to breed. I mean, I'm sorry, it's ridiculous some of the bullshit they come up with. It just is. You know, if you want to believe in your God, fine. You know, I don't have a problem with that. But uh, my question is, is why don't you believe that your God is powerful enough to create evolution? You know, we got proof evolution exists. So if you believe your God created everything that follows that he invented, he created evolution itself. So why you guys want to miss out on that? You changed that narrative. Now you're going to sound more legit to people because right now a lot of people know for a fact evolutionary biology is solid science. It just is. And uh, so, yeah, come on, man. But yeah, cloaking has nothing to do with this. What do you, why would they need, do they need to cloak in on the vegetation mat as they, are you talking about, are you thinking portals? Maybe you should try using the word portals. I mean, I feel like we're getting trolled here already. <clears throat> Ocean Pond says, talk about your aquatic ape. Well, this uh, particular instance would have occurred long before millions of, this is millions of years before the aquatic ape hypothesis would come into effect. That would have been something that took place with our, our line um, somewhere between, you know, six to eight million years ago or something like that. that we're not really sure. But, um, and well, and there's some, there's some other uh, reasons why that really wouldn't play into this particular thing. The idea that Sasquatch made it to Australia to become the, the, the Yowie, um, Based on the scenario that I think Sasquatch, what Sasquatch is, and and it, what I, I I think that Sasquatch would have diverged from us well after, um, the aquatic uh, ape uh, adaptations had had already happened, and Sasquatch had become, you know, we lost our hair, and then the ones who diverged from us to become Sasquatch regained their hair big time because of, of entering into a new type of ecological niche into a new survival scheme. Um, a, a, an attempt apparently to hide from others more and more, a more recruit, re, a more reclusive type of human they became. Whereas we are 
the some of the least reclusive things on the planet everywhere we go we make lots of noise we leave lots of evidence we trash the place we burn it we kill everything there and then we move on after we fucked everything up <laughs> we have a fucking woodstock and shit everywhere and puke and you know what i mean we hum, humanity went these two different very drastic directions <laughs> uh Mr. Lee says, Great White Shark has been seen in English waters. Yeah, they can travel far. I mean, there's nothing to stop them from getting there if they want to. Too many people saying it f for it to be BS. Um, yeah, I call that bull. I call that bullshit. I call that bullshit. Find any evidence that uh, cloaking actually is a real thing. Forget Bigfoot. Is there some other animal that can cloak? I mean, let's, you know, what I think is, is people watch too many, watch the Predator movie too many times. And, and it's just like when people watch werewolf movies too, people watch werewolf movies and suddenly, you know, a new werewolf movie comes out, right? Suddenly you have a rash of werewolf sightings because people got werewolves on the brain. Some people are just that easily programmed and manipulated and they, and they, they see this thing and they, they had, they enjoyed the movie and now they want their... Now, somewhere in their brain, they want werewolves to be real for some stupid reason. Even though in every freaking werewolf movie, it, werewolves are kind of a problem. <laughs> they kind of kill people and stuff. So, and then so people will try and come up with excuses why their their movie of choice is is real. So, no, I'm going to call bullshit on that. A lot of people are just lying. Like, you can't prove to me that anyone making that claim isn't lying, or most people. There might be some, you know, I don't know. You put a lie detector test on everybody, maybe I'll accept it if you get enough of them that pass it. But the ones that pass it could just be people that were completely mistaken. You know, like in the case of Patrick Vaughn, where he claims that this Bigfoot just disappeared right in front of him. And I would say... What's probably more likely is is that he saw Bigfoot. He went into a moment of shock, and when he and when he came back to the Bigfoot had hid, hidden in the in the brush somewhere. And to his perspective, it just vanished. But what really happened is that he was just he just blacked out for a second. He was in such shock. My scenario is far more likely than his scenario because we know that kind of stuff happens to people. We do not have any evidence that uh, uh, such a thing as cloaking exists at all in nature, in any creature at all. So how convenient that people want to point to Bigfoot that we can't seem to catch and say, it cloaks. Well, yeah, it's very convenient that you're saying that about something we can't actually capture and verify. You're as bad as, uh, as uh, hold on, I got to pull up her video. You are bad as Jessica and her tasty teenage boys. Look like a tasty teenage boy. Who she only remote views things that cannot be verified. Because she can't remote view at all, probably. Right? So... <laughs> user says bioluminescence and infrasound can be put down to evolution yes but you know again this is more people just making claims about bigfoot that cannot be verified so you know they say so you're telling me bigfoot's bioluminescent i'm not buying it there's no instance of bioluminescence in any primate. So why should there be in Bigfoot other than people's dreams? They think they saw red eyes or some bullshit like that. And uh, infrasound, again, you know, prove you no, none of these people can prove that the infrasound, the, if they can't, one, most of the time they can't prove they experienced infrasound at all. And even if they could prove that, they can't prove it came from Bigfoot. So we can't run with these kind of ideas just because somebody you like told a story you like and 
it involved infrasound. Infrasound's probably total bullshit. Let's just be real. You know, apply some Occam's razor. What's the most likely explanation? Right? The most like most likely explanation is these people are mistaken or they're fucking liars or they're crazy. Uh, as opposed to oh big Bigfoot's out there engaged in infrasound fucking with people. Woo. Okay. It's not that it's outside the realm of possibility. It's just extremely unlikely to an intelligent person that's, you know, reasonable. Um, most likely, if people are experiencing infrasound, they've encountered a big cat. That's what they've encountered. You know, a mountain lion or maybe even an African lion or, or a tiger, something that got loose here. They ain't supposed to be here. We know they have. So don't run with that. Cra don't run with that stuff. Keep it, keep it kind of, keep it kind of level and you won't sound crazy to, to 99% of the people out there. Jojo says waters must be getting warmer. <clears throat> Summers are coming. <laughs> could he be Matthew Johnson? Yeah, probably <laughs> it could be. Ocean Pond says, what's your approximate timeline for the Donna Sasquatch? I've been meaning to take some time to try and put some more thought into that. And it, it's, it, it'd be hard. It'd be hard. <coughs> because we got to analyze, like, how long, you know, okay, one based on the observations of people that we deem to be pretty reasonable um well pr reasonably good sources you know like people like like let's say we we we're real we're 100% certain that joe saw that sasquatch and he was what what he say uh 40 20, 20 to 40 feet away from it or something like that. And it wasn't like just running away. It was standing there staring at him and like he got a good look at it, right? So let's say that people like that and, he, and there wasn't any woo, there wasn't any mind speak or portals or cloaking or bioluminescence or infrasound or any of that shit. It was just a big hairy dude in the woods. So let's say those kinds of uh, uh, situations we got a few we got enough of those that we feel like that's accurate ac an accurate description of what these things look like and then we got to think about how long would it take to evolve to selectively breed to that form from basically our form because you know we've been like this for a while um but again, like the upright body uh, stance and the hooded nose, these things, <clears throat> these things, and the and the foot shape, uh, the, these things all indicate to me that Sasquatch definitely diverged from us. But sometime after the aquatic ape hypothesis events occurred, um, and so. We're talking between, probably, you know, between 200,000 years ago to, to maybe, I don't know, as much as 2 million, perhaps. It really needs a lot more thought behind it, you know, to answer, to come up with a, some kind of reasonable hypothesis for that. And we need, we need, we need information. We need more data, you know. The user says Scott Carpenter, Claudia Ackley, ETC is too improbable. They were lying to their death. Um, Ron Moorhead, Rob Topless, Janice Carter. That made Mr. Lee chuckle, it looks like. Elephants can zap you with infrasound, too. <clears throat> yeah. So how do we know, like, why when people experience infrasound in the woods, why they immediately say Sasquatch instead of an elephant, you know? But in America, 
you're probably dealing with a mountain lion or something. Brian Chews here says hello everyone watching on TV while relax for the long day of hiking from the long day of hiking and the last hour in the rain down a mountain took a fall but all good Chewy at least came back to see if I was okay oh such a good dog Angel says Chewy's a good boy Chewy you're a good boy Fell down the mountain. Yeah, he fell down the mountain, apparently. That's not far at all to be mistaken. Ten yards is nothing, and that's 30 feet. Joe said about 40 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. That's a real close observation. And, and if it was standing still, like, look, he said it was standing there looking at him kind of disgusted. He got a good look at it, you know. And what he described looked like a human being, just hairier. So it's closely, very close to us, very close to us. Took a little fall, GoPro. User says, if cryptids were alien animal hybrids and did have alien abilities, it would be a defense risk telling the public Oh, crap. Here we go again. Look, a dog and a cat are both from this planet, and they can't crossbreed. Why? Because separate species, that's the definition of a separate species. It's just something that you can't breed with. Anything that you can't breed with is a different species. Why in the hell would any absolutely brain-dead person believe for a second that you could crossbreed with something that's not the same species from you as you and and not just on this planet but something from a totally different planet that's absolutely ridiculous you folks out there talking about alien hybrids of anything this is do you understand how abysmally stupid it is to say this it's absolutely, completely, ridiculously goddamn stupid. <laughs> you cannot make babies with the millions of other types of animals on the planet. You can only make babies with humans and no other animal on the planet. And yet you want to believe that humans can crossbreed with something that's from a totally different planet. Do you think there's going to be any genetic cap capability there? I, I really doubt it. In fact, our physiologies may be completely toxic to one another. There would be no possibility for, no no ability to provide a proper environment to gestate a baby that was half DNA from another planet. It wouldn't work. Either way, it's absolutely such a goddamn ridiculous con comment. You've got to be a troll. Is this Pat? Pat's here trolling us. <laughs> Uh, this has got to be troll. That's the alien hybrid. Anything alien hybrid is absolutely ridiculously stupid. You got to understand that. Ocean Pond says, "Man is best buddy." Good on you for drawing, Jen, for drawing it the best you could for him. Good stuff. Yeah. Brian, speaking of Joe, when are you and Mike, Steve heading out in June? Just finished the work. <coughs> I think I'm about to get a storm up in here. Uh, took him to see actual drawing. He was so happy. Yeah, welcome to the chat, Deborah. At the encounter. Read about Deborah's encounter. Ocean Pond says no so no credence in DNA results for man. X unknown hominid. It, that well, it wouldn't. It we you would not be able to crossbreed with something that's not the same species as you. You know, this is why you're now going to start seeing. I've already seen it in a couple of places. Um, I was probably the first person on the whole damn planet to say this. By the way, that when they discovered that people, um, primarily Caucasians, and then. Um, and, and then a little bit in Asians and other, anyone that wasn't African, that there was Neanderthal DNA in us. 
like we had mixed breed with them. Well, I immediately knew right then. I mean, that was that's smoking gun proof that Neanderthals were not a separate species than us. They were a race of 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 our same species. Because you wouldn't be able to crossbreed and 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 then have a surviving four percent DNA percentage in someone like me today unless they were the same species it's just it's just that's the definition of species some people try to stretch it look we need a designation for what is the the name for for all of the creatures that can interbreed with one another and that's species some people want to stretch it because they want to make you know all this crazy ideas of all this crossbred with that and no 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 no. if they breed together they're the same species so Homo neanderthalensis is what they had been calling Neanderthals. It's incorrect because Neanderthalensis was placed in the species position in the name. What that is correct to say now is that they are Homo sapiens subspecies Neanderthalensis. And I bet I was probably the first person on the damn planet to say that because this has been a freaking... Uh, uh, a, 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 nitpick of mine um uh, i'm forgetting the term i'm trying to use right now for a long time is people blurring the trying to blur the line of what a freaking species is and how you name creatures you know if you know they're the same species you name them the same damn species and they were failing to do that well now some some places some places in the scientific literature they're starting to call them that homo sapiens subspecies neanderthalensis so um so if you're if someone's trying to say you're probably maybe you're referring to uh, melba ketchum's bullshit <laughs> um well for one it's melba ketchum's bullshit so it's not even really worth analyzing at this point but um yeah but if she comes up with some hominid x if anyone comes up with some hominid x bullshit well, it's not hominid X. It's Homo sapiens. It's just maybe some uh, subspecies or race or breed that that we didn't previously know of. That would all. That's all that would mean. Doesn't mean we bred with some other species. Um, gene editing, splicing. Okay, so now you're going to try and say aliens come down and, and was jacking with us. Again, it's some more ridiculous claims that have never been uh, remotely verified and don't make any damn sense. The genetics would be so completely inca- in, incompatible between planets, probably no kind of splicing would be even possible. It wouldn't work. The two different genomes would be absolutely antagonistic to each other they they're not going you're not going to stick stick a bunch of dna together from our planet and another planet and they're just going to sit, sit there and sing kumbaya it's not going to work you know this is this kind of idea comes from a complete uh lack of understanding of genetics like complete total lack of understanding just finished dinner. 15th, I believe. I talked to Mike about it on the other night on Cole's show. He has it marked. I'll be down for Whitehall. Are we seriously going to get some rain right now? Hold on a second. I might have to close the doors. See how bad this is going to be. Looks like it might be pretty brief. Well, I might not button button it down entirely. Looks like it's going to be pretty brief. I'll let it slide. I'll let you. I'll let it slide. Icon, welcome. Welcome back, I guess I should say. Hmm. 
Nice, Brian. Me and the trackways are going to both as well. How you be? Icon, what carbohydrate delights you've been eating? Uh, how goes it? Mr. Pup. Just look forward to meeting you, Chewy too. Raptor's here. What's up, at Raptor? Icon says, how you, Mr. Lee, how did you guess? I made beef stroganoff topped with 16-month-old fresh grated Parmesan. Well, you can make stroganoff with uh, the carnivore noodles. Get that carnivore noodle recipe, and then, boom, there you are. Mr. Lee says, smoke paprika in your stroganoff. What? Got his own stroganoff, stroganoff without onions. Splice was a good movie. Go Loki, go Loki. These sirloin tips. The user says, if only 1% of cryptids are like the movie Primal Rage, that would explain the missing people and women being used for sex by them. Yeah, a whole lot of assumptions there. <laughs> a whole lot of assumptions there. Um, so, I mean, just crazy. That is, man, wh where did we find this person? Mr. Lee says, Icon, next time add the smoke for Pika, telling you. He'd probably be farting up a storm in the other room already if you gave him this bad stuff. Smoke paprika. Found a great carnivore recipe channel. Chris Cooks Nashville. I don't know if I've seen that one before. <coughs> um, the one I usually remember, the, the only one I remember the name of for cooking is ketogenic women or ketogenic woman, and she does a lot of carnivore recipes as well as the ketogenic ones. So, really good on deviled eggs. Um, okay, so on to humans coming to Australia. Now, you know, a lot of people are going to go on the assumption that they use boats, uh, and a lot of people are and a lot of people are going to immediately dismiss the possibility that Sasquatch could swim between islands like this. Um, but that might, might be short-sighted, and maybe and maybe they didn't swim it, you know, out of curiosity to see what was over there. Maybe they did get swept out by a storm. Maybe a typhoon or hurricane or whatever came through. And, and, and uh, you know, they ended up in the water and floating on a log and got blown over there. You know, who, who knows? I mean, um, shit. You know, I, I like one of the one of my movie ideas about Sasquatch has to do with uh, an ancient time when... Um, Humans and Sasquatch has actually existed and interacted together in their society. And how it came to be today where we don't interact anymore. Um, you know, shit happened. Anyway, under that scenario, Sasquatch would have, yeah, damn sure would have gone over on a boat. But, you know, or also on maybe a, a plane of some kind or a, a vessel, a, a ship of some kind. That gets into a little more wild of a scenario involving a technologically advanced culture that included the Sasquatch people. But but uh, keeping it away from that kind of stuff, um, looking at what they're talking about in this article, Sasquatches may have looked out there and saw, hey, there's an island over there. I'm going to swim over there and see what's up. You know? Who's to say they couldn't make the swim? They're a big, powerful beast. Lots of peeps go missing, not always cryptids. 
Yeah. Yeah. There, I mean, a lot of people want to assume just because someone disappeared without a trace, it's got to be the cryptids. Or it just means it got disappeared. Okay. Some, maybe there's a serial killer in the woods. You know, maybe they got hauled off by a bear or a mountain lion or whatever and just weren't ever found. Maybe they fell in a river and got washed away. You, you know, there's all kinds of scenarios where people could just disappear and it has nothing to do with cryptids. But people, you know, they've been watching too much of that freaking uh, missing 411 crap. You know, you can get carried away with this stuff if you're not careful. It was interesting. But there's no proof that anything supernatural happened. There's just a mystery. Like, we don't know what happened. And so you don't want to jump to start jumping to conclusions. Well... Since we can't find any, any what, since we can't figure out what happened, and it's weird, uh, it must be cryptids. It must be demons or ghosts or portals or some other kind of bullshit. Just uh, slow your whole roll down. It, mu it does not must be nothing. <laughs> so, check it, check it out. Yeah. I, mean, I may have seen it. I've seen so many of those channels, they all run together. I mean, I just thought. The only one I remember the name of is Ketogenic Woman. And then there's the one with the twin women. Um, uh, I forget their channel name, though. And there's some, you know, just different people. But I just don't know the names of their channels. Um, stick that link up. <laughs> Check it. Raptor says, still don't believe there's Bigfoot in Australia. Australia has been disconnected on its own for 30,000 years or more. Doesn't matter. The article we just went over showed, like, Australia is way closer to the islands in Southeast Asia. So it's way more likely that something can make it over there like that than the monkeys in the article we just looked at. In the article we just looked at, those monkeys floated all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. How did you get the monkeys from Africa all the way to South America? It's because sometimes animals get washed out to sea. They grab onto some floating vegetation of some kind. And, you know, most, most may die, but sometimes they make it all the way across. I mean, uh, you know, look at, uh, I mean, a lot of things. A lot of animals have made it to places that doesn't seem like how do they make it there. Well, because sometimes shit happens. <laughs> you know, if those monkeys can make it across the Atlantic Ocean, it would be 10 times easier for Sasquatch to make it from Asia to Australia. So it's definitely within the realm of possibility. I'm not saying it's a certainty that they're there. I'm just saying it's within the realm of possibility. You know, I just don't, you know... People shouldn't say, you know, they definitely can't be there when they definitely could be. It's a possibility. Because then what happens? Well, if, if you declare and everybody believes, oh, they're not there, then people aren't looking for them there, right? And then they don't find them and they're like, see? <laughs> and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Going to try carnivore mashed taters. Late to the party, Donald. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Mr. Lee says, uh, Lockbeard, that cloud lady with the keto bread. Yeah. <clears throat> the cloud bread, which is mostly made of a fluffed up egg whites, but it's got some other stuff in it. Now you got, you got to tend to the husband. See you later. A lot of missing people is accidents, but if you pass in the woods, the scavengers will clean up. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, everybody's saying goodnight to Deborah. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're talking about in this article. 
Although technically we are still in an ice age right now, but but the uh, sea level was much lower. And there's the whole matter that we talked about before that 13,000 years ago, the sea level rose 400 feet because of the younger Dryas impact. So the sea level is much higher right now. So it seems like there's a lot more distance between Australia and the island chains that are north of it. But, um, then there, but, but there wasn't that much distance before because the sea level was much lower. How to get to Australia more than 50,000 years ago. Over just the past few years, new archaeological findings have revealed the lives of early Aboriginal Australias in Northern Territories, Kakadu potential, potentially as early as 65,000 years ago, from the Kimberley and Pilbara regions of Western Australia by about 50,000 years ago and the Flinders Ranges of South Australia by around 49,000 years ago. But how was it even possible for people to get to Australia in the first place? And how many people must have made it to Australia to explain the, the, the diversity of Aboriginal people today? In a study published in Quaternary uh, Science Reviews this week, we use new environmental reconstructions, voyage simulations, and genetic population estimates to show for the first time that colonization of Australia by 50,000 years ago was achieved by a globally significant phase of purposeful and coordinated marine voyaging. Past environments, Australia has never been connected by dry land to Southeast Asia, but at the time, at the time uh, that people first arrived in Australia, sea levels were much lower, joining the Australian mainland to both Tasmania and New Guinea. So they were all one, one continent. Our analysis using New high-resolution mapping of the sea floor shows that when sea levels were 75 meters or lower than present, a string of more than 100 habitable resource-rich islands were present off the coast of Northwest Australia. These islands were directly visible from high points on the islands of Timor and Roddy and as close as 87 kilometers. This chain of now mostly submerged islands, the Sahul Banks, was almost 700 kilometers long. They represented a very large target for either accidental or purposeful arrival. So, this is a very small distance compared to the Atlantic Ocean. In that first article I showed you where the monkeys made it from Africa to South America, they crossed the entire Atlantic Ocean. So if those monkeys can make it completely across the Atlantic Ocean on floating vegetation, why can't Sasquatch make it across here the same way? Or maybe even swam it because it says here, that these islands were visible from Timor and Roddy, these islands in the upper left corner on this map here. And then there would be nothing to swim from island to island to get onto the mainland of Australia from there. And voila, you got Sasquatch coming out of Asia into Australia. No problem. This is absolutely no problem. It's it's fine. <laughs> there's there's no reason to say, oh my gosh, there cannot be Sasquatch in Australia. No, you can't say that. There absolutely can be. There's there's just it, it's just I don't know why why uh, people would want to be so blind to this this these facts that I've already showed here. You know, a, a, a Sasquatch, you know, hanging out on these islands here. Um, you know, maybe a 
badass hurricane comes through and somehow they end up in this ocean and the currents carry them over or may, maybe they grab onto a log or something and they float on it and they land on the islands uh off australia here but i'll, I'll even just even though it isn't connected by land, Sasquatch could have ended up in Australia this way. How difficult was it? <clears throat> Damn it. Hopefully my voice holds out. How difficult was it to get to Australia? <clears throat> uh, hold on. I think I'm going to have a coughing fit. Uh, let me catch let me catch up in the chat mr lee says he was nowhere to be seen but they did find his boat his boots <clears throat> not yet how much mass was in the asteroid impact that's displacing a lot of water um, I don't know what the numbers they estimated on that are, <clears throat> although they're not 100% certain of the impact site, but they seem to think it is Hiawatha Crater. What they do know is there was, in fact, an impact. <clears throat> Damn it. <clears throat> Damn it, man. Oh, man. If you haven't looked at uh, Randall Carlson's discussion on this, uh, he talked about it on Joe Rogan. He's talked about it on his own channel, the Cosmographia uh, channel. Starts with uh, K, Cosmo, uh, Graphia. <clears throat> anyway, where he explains pretty much what ha had to have happened and the, some of the evidence of it. It's just mind-blowing how devastating, freaking crazy, apocalyptic this situation was. <clears throat> Where the gigantic flood occurred in North America. If, if anything survived getting washed out to sea in that flood, the flood was just exceedingly violent and anything that would have flowed out i mean there was opportunity for all i mean you know there's going to be a few things that do survive and end up on floating debris and they're going to end up on other continents and sasquatch could have easily been floated out to sea on on some stuff during that event it could have been thirteen thousand years ago that could have been the point in time that sasquatch landed in australia from america if he survived the floating, you know, the the disaster. I mean, it's a wild disaster, and a long it'd be a long trip, right? But Sasquatch, you know, may have skills that we're not aware of when it comes to fishing and stuff like that. And we don't know how long they could go without food. You know, a human can go weeks without food, depending on how fattened you are. I mean. That one dude, he went a year, you know, he fasted a year and lost a bunch of weight. Because why? Body fat is just stored food. You can live on that. If you got body fat, you can live on it for as long as you need to. You just need water. Uh, Raptor says, it was proven they made boats. That's how the Aborigines originally got there with the giant lizards already there living there with the kangaroos and everything else yeah the lizards yeah the lizards developed there <clears throat> but the the, the me megalania the megalania monitor lizard there they are related to the komodos the, the komodos had to have left australia themselves and they didn't have boats Are we seriously going to have a tornado siren right now? Oh, man. I mean, another interesting thing uh, uh, mentioned in kangaroos, marsupials did not originate in Australia. <laughs> they come from America. 
That was a long time ago, though. And I think they were still connected. That's why. That That's a different scenario. Brian Chase says, hey, Jen Trackway told me the story of how bad he felt for you on the trip without a shower. And he was stinking. I'm sure you know he was has the portable shower now. Oh, you got, yeah, I know it's late where you're at. See you later, JoJo. You missed Deb. I want to tell her how to recon reconfigure your fight video. Contender. Jen says, yeah, Brian, we were all pretty yuck that trip. Tell me about the camp shower. All I can say is woo. <clears throat> yeah, man, I'm telling you. I have eye glaze when science uses big words. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. <clears throat> Jen says, Brian, he said he was going to take some adjustments to get it before try early. Good to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's a scary thing. That's why we need to get our shit together as a species and really work together about planetary defense. <clears throat> I mean, it sounds science fiction and blah, 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 but the reality is, is there are chunks of rocks flying around in the freaking universe that if they hit the Earth, yeah, there's going to be a, a, a brief... <laughs> it's going to be very quick. We won't know what the fuck happened, man. No more, no more Earth. Anti-M, anti-M, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully I'm not flying away. I'm flying away. <clears throat> Deb, uh, Deb Subby thinks it's hilarious, her UK flyweight title. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm, I'm maintaining it. It's, um, it's hard. Voices taking it. It's been, it's been rough on my voice. And it's like there's something in there, you know. I can't quite get it hacked out, you know. It's, uh. Donald says they, de they deflected one asteroid, probably on course for a direct hit. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, jacking around. You've seen this stuff uh, over... Uh, well, where's over there where they're having all the floods because they've been cloud seeding and they've been fucking around cloud seeding and they cause these these all these deadly floods and shit. <sighs> Humans, no matter how smart we get, we gotta always remember we don't know everything. So don't go jacking with shit too much. <clears throat> the fact is is like cloud seeding somebody should have looked at it and said you know what this is a bad idea and um let's just not do that if it don't rain enough here maybe we're not supposed to grow shit here maybe mother nature mother nature has made her choice and we need to go grow our shit elsewhere or listen to Lockbeard. And don't grow anything at all. Well, you might grow cotton. You know, cotton might be okay to grow some. Although we can, we can probably. I don't know, because I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm in a war against polyester. Polyester's bad for you. It's toxic. You shouldn't wear it. Uh, hundred percent cotton or na natural, natural fibers, cotton or, or some kind of animal. Um animal hair I don't know I don't know that I, I you know I don't know enough about the industry to to say that we could possibly supply all human clothing needs with only animal hair and just abandon agriculture altogether because I mean you know growing cotton seems kind of stupid when you can just you know graze a herd of sheep on that same land and 
shear those bitches. You know, or any other type of you know animal that is a it gives you hair. Ocean says some gusts like event can happen anytime. Not sure it can be avoided as yet. Yeah, we would need to have a lot of satellites and a lot of eyes in the sky. You know, uh, more specialized cameras. There's going to be some, you know, assistance from AI. You know. We need to make sure we can keep a tight rein on that AI, but but eventually, theoretically, we could get it to a point where we have a surrounding cloud of of uh, of uh, satellites that can detect incoming asteroids in time for us to do something about deflecting it. Because most asteroids we could probably deflect and. And possibly all asteroids, if we have enough, uh, if we have enough, uh, uh, leave, you know, um, time, if we detect it early enough. Um, I, but there's, I mean, there's surely there's a limit to that. If there's an entire planet flying at us, we're probably fucked, right? We probably better be chasing down those portal hopping bigfoot that the what's his whoever that was claims exists <clears throat> portal hopping bigfoot man but yeah right now we're sitting ducks for we're in a shooting gallery and you know at any time we could be completely fucked and it sucks it's really a shame we're at a unique time in our history where we could totally not be sitting ducks if we chose to but for some reason we just stick around our governments i should say and also some vermont turds are pushing the global warming blame on last year's floods freaking snowflakes yeah floods happen droughts happen blah 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 uh, yeah it's just have i said global warming's bullshit the EPA is lying about that shit. The government's lying about that shit. Global warming's bullshit. Florida's still there. Any new people watching this in the future? Um, global warming is bullshit. Sorry. I mean, the, the planet climate fluctuates all the time. And humans might have a very slight effect. But that sun up there has a firm grip on the thermostat of the planet. It this mostly has to do with that sun. <clears throat> what its current activity levels are, what and how and the distance. Because our distance to the sun fluctuates some. And that determines our temperature too. Mr. Lee says Lockbeard the animals eat vegetables though. That's how you know what you're supposed to eat. If you see something that's eating vegetables, that's probably something that you need to eat. Including vegans. Vegans eat vegetables? Yeah, I think you could probably eat vegans. Although they're probably laced with all kinds of weird drugs and and have all kinds of imbalances. I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't eat them. Ocean Pond says... Uh, uh, June, July, and October, November are prime time frames. Yeah, we're passing through the uh, the belt. The Donald says instead of aiming at each other, aim at the aim to the sky. Yeah, kind of. But we we but like I talked about this before, we we literally can't. We're genetically programmed to fight. <laughs> we can't help it. Um, we can talk about it, and we we intellectually can understand. We're genetically programmed to fight. But as a species, we'll we'll just we'll just never be able to to stop. That's why I say we should embrace that nature in us, and just uh, um, do something like the uh, the uh, oh, what were they called? The the Drazi. 
in Babylon 5 when they picked the purple and the green sash. There's half and half. They split their people into two into two groups, equal size groups, green, green sash wearing people, dr drowsy, and the uh, purple sash wearing drowsy. And then they fight to the death. And so, you know, mo like 90, 99% of them probably die, right? Because, you know, the green are killing the purple, the purple are killing the green. And eventually one side, you know, wins, but there's, you know, you might have started with a million of them, uh, a million greens over here, and then they win, and there's like 10 of them left. But don't matter. That's that's what they do. They fight. And they're intelligent. They're space-firing space -firing civilization, but they do what they do. And and humans will do the same, so we, we should embrace it, I think. And just say, you know, every so often, um, this nation is going to go to war with some other nation and just do it. And people will be like, some people will be complaining. Uh, I don't think we should be doing this. This is stupid. Shut the fuck up and go fight. No. Well, you're fighting me right now. Channel that to them. Because <laughs> that's what will happen. You know, the, 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 those people, there will always be people, they'll say, oh, hey, I don't want to fight. But the reality is, is that that seed is in there and it will build up and it will turn into social ills which we've talked about that, how these social ills pop up where, you know, all this ridiculous behavior that we see in our society right now has to do with the fact that none of these sniveling shits have been to war. None of these sniveling shits have been to war. They would shut the fuck up if they ever went to war. They wouldn't do this shit. Let's see here. Blame everything on global warming from the droughts to the floods, snow and ice. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they never experienced weather their whole life. It also it's got pretty cold when the eclipse happened. Yeah, that was pretty neat. I wish we could have, have one of those anytime we want every time we need it. Or more, have them more often. That would be cool. AI to generate lasers like the game Asteroids. <coughs> well, I imagine probably our best bet would be to have have uh, thousands and thousands of um, of kind of a rockets with the capability of latching on to a, a, an asteroid that are stationed out there all around in a big, a big globular shaped, you know, shield around, around, around the earth. And then use those to intercept with an asteroid and then using their, uh, they're already fueled. And then they latch onto the asteroid and then they start pushing the asteroid into a different trajectory and get it away from the earth. And, and ideally they should always push them into the damn sun you know just push them into the sun they can't hurt the sun no it says yes angel between the feeding erect <laughs> ed snake oil pork global warming bs youtube needs to take a look at their loud advertisers yeah it's funny isn't it funny um, so tying back some of the stuff we've already talked about, because, you know, if you, any, I don't know if any of y'all watch Tim Pool stuff, sometimes I watch, I don't watch him all the time, but sometimes I watch stuff because he annoys me, especially Ian. Ian is annoyed. I wish they'd get rid of fucking Ian. Ian's goddamn stupid, man. Anyway, <laughs> I can't stand Ian. Every time he starts talking, I'm like, fuck, what kind of bullshit now? Jesus Christ. But um, uh, anyway, YouTube like retroactively took down a cup a couple of their most watched shows ever, uh, the Tim Pool shows, um, from like like three years ago I think he said they were. So YouTube's retroactively taking down their shit, and and so they're, they're just YouTube's all the time they're fucking with us. 
you know, because YouTube's been acting weird and stuff, and just weird shit's been going on with it. They've changed something. That's that's what's happened. They've changed something, and it's causing old videos to get taken down. Um, <clears throat> like I, I had one taken down over on the the uh, Phenomenon Network channel thing that I've been keeping put it up. You know that. Maybe one day I'll run with that. Maybe I won't. But if anything else, it's a backup uh, re, uh, place for Lockbeard Phenomena only over there right now. But maybe some other people's shows will start to be on there. Who knows? Um, if I run with the network. But anyway, um, what was the thing? They said something during Temple's segment about this that we were talking about earlier and now I've lost it but um but yeah the, the rules for us are just ridiculous because they want they don't they if you're not take if you're not talking the right narrative they they'll take you down act like you're a horrible depraved person and meanwhile you're offending Donald with this ED pills and snake oil porn. <laughs> they saw my tool and think it needs girth. <laughs> How'd they see your see your tool though? Raptor says the problem is we don't have the technology to push an asteroid away from us. That would be great if they did come up with something. Uh, I think we have the technology now. It's just a matter of spending the money on it and doing it. I mean, because all you got to do is have, you know, have these rockets flying around in various orbits, but it's all in a globular area out there. And um, <clears throat> when you spot an asteroid coming, you send some of those or however many you need to, to, to come up to the asteroid, you know, come up. You know, the asteroids flying along and they come up and and uh, and 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 land on it. You know, so if it's going towards the earth and you push in from the side here, it's not going to hit the earth. Right. If it's uh, if it's on there and it gets enough push on it. And of course, it depends on how big it is. If it's really, really big, we may not we may not be able to have enough. We may not have enough fuel on the planet to push something really big like a, like a planet. Okay, you know you're not going to have enough fuel on a on our planet to push another planet that's coming at us. In that case, only thing we can do is evacuate, which gets me to my other thing that you know I was talking about back in 2001 in the forum online about humanity should be working on being prepared to evacuate all humans very quickly and animals and entire ecosystems it was a huge project i talked about before and it would be insanely expensive and of course that's a pipe dream right because again humans aren't going to work together well enough to do that and you know evil people want to control shit and some people want to keep other people from you know surviving and it's just stupid shit them them cameras always taking pics for Google. Yeah. After they hit one last year, they measured the deflection now. Ocean Pond says, we can barely shoot a balloon down, let, let, let alone an asteroid or a comet. I don't know. I think that balloon nonsense was something else was going on there. But, you know, of course, Biden's in charge. So, you know, of course, they couldn't shoot the balloon down. He he's buddies with China. He's he's betrayed us. He's a traitor. Uh, he's in cahoots with China. Um, Mr. Lee says new alien series coming soon. Romulus. Yeah, they already fucked up aliens. Raptor says even a small one that came up with you would have to have rockets on that asteroid that are bigger than what they did. With the shuttle. Yeah. I mean, you have to have a lot. That's what I'm saying. It would be absolutely massive, massive planetary defense project. Extremely expensive. But if people want to fucking live, <laughs> you know, you know, 
So let's get on with this article. Because, look, I pretty much, this is open and shut case. It really is. That, that Sasquatch could easily have made it to Australia. There's no reason to think that Yowie can't be real. It could be. It could be. Not saying it definitely is, just saying it could be. So it says, how difficult was it to get to Australia? Combining modeling winds and ocean currents with particle trajectory modeling, we simulated voyages from three sites on the islands of Timor and Roddy. This is similar to the approach used to model the movements of records from the missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 which we're going to talk about in a little while. You guys definitely need to see this shit, okay? I know Moogs is coming on in 30 minutes, but fuck that shit. You need to see this Malaysia Airlines shit, man. Fucking the plane. I, I don't want to spoil but the, 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 the thumbnail already spoiled it. The plane was surrounded by orbs and then got sucked through a fucking portal. I shit you not. <laughs> so... Fuck Moogs, stay here. You hear me, Mr. Lee? <coughs> you're not going to believe this shit. If you haven't seen this yet, you're not going to believe this shit. Anyway, it says, in our model, we simulated the launch of 100 vessels from each site on February 1st each year for 15 years. The date was chosen to correspond to the main summer monsoon period when the winds are generally blowing through the east-southeast, thereby maximizing the chance of successful crossings. Which, again, why has it got to be a purposeful crime? I mean, they could be just clinging to vegetation. They got blown off of a island in heavy winds or something and landed in the ocean and got washed out in a river. Who knows? And just ended up floating over there just like those monkeys. So, you know, they, did, they didn't have to be, there didn't have to be any boats involved. I'm saying that humans could have survived the crossing, clinging to floating vegetation, too, especially uh, on the, such a short distance. The results clearly indicate that accidental arrival by drifting alone is very unlikely at any time, but the addition of even modest paddling towards the Sahu Banks Islands results in a high proportion of successful arrivals. Over four to seven days, the highest probability of a successful landfall is associated with launching points on Western Timor and Roddy. Again, these guys are being way too pessimistic about the possibility here, right? Because, look, the monkeys got to South America from Africa across the goddamn Atlantic Ocean. With, they didn't have a boat. They, they had to have been floating on some vegetation of some kind that was floating Let's see if we can play this video without causing any problems <laughs> How many people did it take to colonize Australia? Researchers have long speculated about how many people originally colonized Australia. Some have argued that Australia must have been colonized by accident, perhaps by just a few people. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was accident. Maybe it was on purpose. Who knows? I mean, if they could see the islands, humans are natural explorers. If they saw the islands, they probably said, hey, let's paddle over there. And I don't, I don't see why they couldn't have done it. I think we underestimate what they could have done. Others have, have suggested a steady trickle of colonists. Estimates of the founding population have ranged from 1,000 to 3,000. The genetic evidence shows that Australia was colonized in a single phase, perhaps at multiple locations, but with very limited gene flow after initial colonization. 
the diversity of mitochondrial DNA lineage is found in Aboriginal populations allows us to estimate the minimum size of the original colonizing population. Mitochondrial DNA is only inherited from mothers. Aboriginal mitochondrial DNA diversity alone represents at least nine to ten separate lineages, assuming, eh, well, this goes into a lot of stuff that really doesn't matter. The point is, the point is, the monkeys made made it across the Atlantic Ocean, the humans made it to Australia, and it's just, the main point I had here is that this is a tiny, tiny gap that needed to be crossed compared to the Atlantic freaking ocean and the monkeys some stupid monkeys floated across the atlantic ocean so yeah there is no problem with the possibility of sasquatch slash yowies being in australia i'm sorry it's totally a possibility assuming they exist assuming they exist Donald says you folks didn't watch them impact that one Raptor says cameras were rolling when they made an impact hit at dead center. Yeah, Mr. Lee says Yahweh can definitely be real. Yeah. I mean, I think just with these two articles and the points I've made, it's definitely 100% a possibility. Yeah, there's really not much more to say. I mean, and that, it's not even bringing into the possibility, the consideration that maybe uh, my theory that perhaps in the past, our type of human and Sasquatch type of human may have interacted more. Maybe Sasquatch trusted us better back in the day, 50,000 years ago. Um, during the civilization that built all those, those stone structures. Because, you know, if they those people were not building all those stone structures long, long ago and not have boats. If anyone's assuming that humans didn't have boats that far back, they're fucking stupid you know yeah. humans have been able to do all this type of shit all kinds of tool making for a very 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 long time um and there's no reason to think the sasquatch can't figure out how to float across something on a log or something you know it's a it's a really simple concept so yeah Michael Haywood. <laughs> yeah, fuck modes, man. Word G. Raptor said that Donald, I understand that I'm asking where is the video that where they hit that dead center comment you're talking about. Asteroid hit by a weapon to test for rerouting. Whatever Raptor, they hit it at quite the distance. We have the technology to deflect potential threats. Yeah, we totally do. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, really. You just hit it with a hit it with a, a, a explosion of some kind maybe might be appropriate sometimes or you know uh attach a thruster it's basically attach a thruster to it and push it and just change if you if you if you do that early enough you know you change its trajectory oh you know it's going to miss the planet so user says uh, the book Solaris by Stanislaw Lim was written after interviewing cosmonauts about what they experienced. Um, I'm not sure how relevant that is. Chessboard's here. Welcome. I just I just proved that it is possible that Yowie is in Australia, but I can't prove that Yowie is actually in Australia. Sorry. Raptor says, Donald, okay, I'll look it up later. I was trying to argue. Just wanted to know. I wasn't trying to argue. Just wanted to know if you had the video for it. So the next thing. Oh, damn it. There we go. So let me make sure you guys can see this all right. Yeah. New witness of the 1973 alien abduction in Mississippi featured in the new Netflix doc claims she saw the five foot creatures with pincher like claws that performed examinations 
on two fishermen. So I think that you're um, I believe because what I because I was watching them from my car. So I know it had to have been after Oh, so you watched it from your car before. Oh, yes. Uh, and or okay, so it couldn't have been the same time either. Okay. Uh, so it's Calvin so Cal and Charlie back when they brought them back from the spaceship, it took off. And that's when I seen it go down. They they like to follow the river or the roads and stuff as you use them for maps. You were outside or inside your car? I was inside my car. And he was inside the car. He was inside, you were inside. inside okay. the car. Okay. And uh, I'm I'm looking down and you know, I seen Calvin and uh Charlie down there fishing. And um so I'm looking what's going on all around me, you know, because I had nothing else to do. So when I look off in the distance, I seen um which I thought was an airplane come over towards Boche, come in my view, and so I'm just watching it. And I'm thinking, oh, there's a UFO, you know, how you <laughs> just see something so like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch that. I, said, I, I get distracted <laughs> easily. I'm always looking at my windows like, what's that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna watch that and see mm -hmm. what that does. I was the entertainment. <laughs> yeah, just because I was bored. And mm -hmm. so it kind of like, there's Highway 90, it kind of, it followed the length of the, you know, followed the Highway 90, it stayed right there like it was a map. And it come down and right before we had a drawbridge back then the, it's not the same bridge and when it right before it got to the uh, drawbridge it crossed over and come down and i told my husband i said i didn't know there was a a, a little air strip over there because it come down like it was landing and that was on the other side of the river by yeah. where charlie and yeah Adam where charlie okay. was at yeah and then it came down and when it come down it's uh come over by where they were at and it come up behind them Okay. And so it kind of like was in the marsh, but I'm thinking it's a, a, a little space place over there where they can land, um, you know, a landing place. But it wasn't, it was there just land, they was just hovering over the marsh. Wow. <laughs> um, and then what did you see happen? Uh, well, when I seen it coming, it come up behind them, which I didn't know that's what it was doing because mm -hmm. I couldn't, because it was, it, it done got dark. That's what I was wondering too. Was it kind of like, could you see very well or was it dark? It was dark. Okay. It gotten dark, yeah. And um, it was coming be up behind them. That's when Calvin said he seen the blue lights. He thought it was cops. Yes. <laughs> so I'm on this side. Trespassing. <laughs> yeah. I'm on this side walking my car and it's come, I seen the lights, the blue lights flashing. It was like both, both of the lights were like this and blue. And it was coming up behind them. And when it got up behind them, um, that's what he said. He thought, well, we're in trouble, Charlie. Okay. <laughs> but um, anyway, it, uh, I seen it when it, the, the door opened. Okay. How did it open? It, it like just, side to side? Or yeah, like, like, yeah, like okay. that. Okay, like an elevator almost yeah. for two, two yeah, sides? Yeah, it like opened up. The bright light come through. The bright uh, white light come through. It's very bright. And I seen the three, uh, the three UFO guys come out. Alien, 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 or something. <laughs> alien, whatever they are. But see, at the time, I didn't know that's what that was. Right. I'm watching from a distance, not really knowing what I'm seeing. Was it? Did, yeah. So did it look more just like shadows, almost? Or no, it looked it looked like people. I mean, okay. from where I was at, I'm right. thinking I'm looking at people. The people coming out yeah. of this craft. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, they come out. They come out. They went. They went down to where they were at, and Calvin and Charlie was at. And I seen when they when they brought them back, and Calvin had by the arm and Charlie by the arm, and Calvin is slumped over. He looks like he's passed out, and Charlie he's kind of like hanging on there. You know, he's he's not he's not um as scared. Okay. He's, he's mm -hmm. not as scared as what Calvin was. Anyway, they took him up into the space craft, and it was like thirty minutes later. Like I said, I don't know, didn't know exactly what was happening over there. I'm just watching from afar until later on. And then um, they, they come back out, the, uh, they brought them out and took them back down to the uh, water front, set them down, and um, about 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. And, and so, so um, that's when I seen it go down. And come back the spacecraft and then it went back down and that's when i told my husband okay. i believe it when did you first meet calvin parker 
the first time I met, well, the first time I actually seen him was when he got abducted. You were there, had, it, had someone to relate to. But everything that happened that night between um, Calvin and Charlie with the aliens, when the space, the humanoid shot them, I seen it all. I seen the whole thing. I seen it come down. I seen it when and from the distance when it was far because it come over and it started following the, the path of the highway. Interesting. And it came as following the highway because I, I watched it and it came all the way down right before it got to the drawbridge, which was there at the time. It crossed over and it started coming down. I said, "When are that planes going?" I said, "It's not no, it's not no." Uh, aircraft thing over there for them to land. Well, she full of shit. People out there start to people. I mean, is she adding any new information, really? I don't know. He says, she's nuts. Why all the giddy laughing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, man. No, man, he says. No, man. Pat says, no, she's fucking nuts. Rapper says, making up false content for money on the channel. All the pictures were in stone, and they faded out with time. Your pictures of you building the Sphinx? Yeah, yeah. Ocean says, Calvin and Charlie must have had a bad night. Yeah, they, apparently it sounds like they did. I think she roofied them both. That's what really happened. So, is it, I don't want to risk hypnosis in case it goes wrong. What in the hell is wrong with the signal up in this bitch? Um... Are we having a power outage, maybe? I don't know. No, that place is going. I don't know if that's a generator running or what. Signal's still on. I need to get the power hooked up to the battery power, or I'm going to uh, have an unscheduled shutdown on this sucker. Please stand by. Yeah, users, I, I obviously you believe that aliens are abducting people. I don't believe that's the case. I don't see adequate evidence of that. Um, if somebody is abducting people, it is either our government or someone else's government or the remains of the ancient civilization of humans, who the ones who I think built the moon, who built all of the the massive megalithic structures around the earth tens of thousands of years ago, not just five or 6,000 years ago or whatever ridiculously young age they give the shit like the Sphinx, like the Sphinx. It's way older than what they say. There was an ancient civilization of advanced humans who didn't just have boats. They had aircraft, they had spacecraft, that kind of shit. And that moon is constructed. It's not natural. And um, so you're missing out on some really cool shit if you just look at what there's evidence for. There's evidence for the moon being an uh, artificial structure. There's no evidence for aliens abducting these people. It's probably, if, if there is something that looks weird, like the, the description of the grays, well, grays to me look like something that could be a breed of humans, basically a Chihuahua version of a human, right? What? Why are the aliens basically humanoid is what I'm saying. We got a lot of weird shit on our planet, right? We got animals here that look way different from us. Octopus, octopus is a weird ass animal. It definitely comes from Earth. Don't listen to those people say, oh, it's an alien. No, it's a mollusk. It's a mollusk, okay? We have a lot of species of mollusks. They're clearly there's a clear place where they fit. And, and, and what I'm saying is an octopus is a very weird creature and it comes from here. So why is it that the alien, the aliens that people are seeing, 
look almost exactly like a human well probably because they are human they're a type of human a race of humans they're better little they're <coughs> they've lived separate from us for a long time possibly all inside the moon maybe some places on earth that out of sight but but um you know it's far more likely Occam's razor, right? It's far more likely, especially if the shit with genetic tests and crossbreed, because you want to believe there's hybrids, right? Well, if those aliens are a race of homo sapiens, then yeah, they're totally compatible with us. Now we can have hybrids with them, but guess what? They're not aliens. They're human. Okay. So there's no alien human hybrids. That's absolutely, totally a ridiculous concept, even with, technological splicing the two genomes would be so alien to each other that they would be antagonistic to, to each other they could not function together it wouldn't make sense to waste time trying to force them to function together people who say that aliens can cross breed with humans have zero understanding of genetics or biology at all and they possibly have their head all the way up their ass and yeah so the whole story sounds made up this is mr lee raptor you think as the world turns was real they got paid <laughs> when sand plays havoc on stone yep squash sock says the giddy thing is always a huge red flag with stories yeah it can be but some people that's just their nervous behavior you know they're ner they're nervous but it can be certainly Peer reviewed science journal Lancet claimed hypnotism was a stage act with a paid audience. Um, I don't know what you're referring to there. Donald says, wouldn't doubt there's a higher intelligence in our oceans. Um, could be, you know, could be. There's a lot we haven't seen down there. There could be some somebody down there that's smarter than us. Raptor says, Lock, is the storms moving through into Ohio Valley? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that we had a little bit of a storm, but what, it, well, it wasn't much of one, but came through. Helped cool things down. I'm sure glad. Dr. Stephen Greer reckons the government are faking alien abductions. Yeah, they could be doing that. They could be doing it. It could just all be fake. I kind of hope that the small race of alien-like what people call aliens i don't call them i don't think they're aliens if they're real if if they're real i don't think these grays that people talk about are aliens i think they are a race of humans basically the chihuahua version of us you know a race of people that are just small which is totally feasible totally possible um don't know if it's true but you know it's a it's a it's a way better theory than aliens flew halfway across the universe to probe our ass that don't make any goddamn sense and and they look almost exactly like us when compared with all the other weird looking shit on our planet they look almost exactly like us hmm hmm why aren't they covered in tentacles or some shit Three minutes behind. We'll put her in uh, 1.25 speed or 2x speed or whatever your preferred speed is, and and you can be live with us. Kaiju says, "Lock their humans from the future." Well, that theory I've heard people say that, but um, I don't believe that's the case. Time, um, the whole concept of t uh, reverse time travel um, is is fantasy. Um, science fiction even like if it's in, if it's in science fiction science fiction has time travel in the past i say we should call it fantasy instead of science fiction because it's such a ridiculous concept time we don't have we it's funny we don't have time to try and go into why it's such a ridiculous concept now moving a little faster going forward might be a possibility 
but going in reverse just breaks the entire damn universe, right? It, it can't work. It can't happen. It, it's it's just it's a it's a it's an utterly ridiculous concept. It's just um, so I'm going to do everything I can try to squash that entire idea. It's ridiculous. It can't happen. The paradox, the paradoxes would be insane. Like way worse than you ever see in the science fiction, and the whole idea, like they have in, in a lot of science fiction, where well, every time you make a change, you know, the universe splits into two. Yeah, that's a ridiculous concept. It's completely stupid. It's absolutely ridiculous. But um, yeah, yeah. Squatch Talk says the grays look like primates, sort of. Yeah, that sort of. I mean, we, we kind of go. I, I go, I mean, you got to take the appearance descriptions loosely because a lot of people can't accurately describe, you know, um, a person they saw going down the street, right? They, 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 they can't accurately describe stuff. So we kind of got to, we can't, we can't take it as gospel. What a lot of people have said they look like. We got to understand that some people can't describe the damn thing. You know, they just, there's, there's not good at it. No pubes, kind of weird. Maybe they, uh, you know, maybe they laser it all off. I, <laughs> um, I applaud them. Um, you know, we no, we don't need no 1970s aliens. Chessboard says, Donald, there are humans that cannot talk but are highly intelligent. So what cannot another creature be this? Why cannot another creature be the same? Humans from the far future. Think about it. No, no. It, it, reverse time travel is this completely not possible. Completely not possible. I know a lot of people want it to be. They want to, you know, they want to believe. Oh, let's look at this guy and this old picture, and he's got a he's got a cell phone and the sunglasses in this when they didn't have cell phones or something. You know, it, it's all bullshit. It's like Mandela effect. All Mandela effect is is people misremembering shit. And some degree of pareidolia kicking in, which we're all familiar with Bigfoot stuff, right? Um, the, the mind wants to fill in the blanks the way it thinks it needs to be. It's a survival mechanism that we have to fill in the blanks. Sometimes if, you, if your eye doesn't quite catch 100% of the picture, your mind is very complex and, and, and constructs a complete picture that it thinks should be there. So that you're able to handle whatever is there. And sometimes it makes a mistake and it sees a face in the bush that isn't there. You go over there with your weapon drawn because an enemy attacker might be there and he's not. Sometimes it's a mistake. It's better to make that mistake and see a face that isn't there than to fail to see the face in the bush and you die. So that's why your brain, this is my hypothesis, this is why your brain is a little bit overzealous about picking out faces and things because it's better to to see a face that isn't there than to fail to see a face that is there. So it's 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 overactive about finding faces so that you deal with that. It could be a potential enemy or other familiar forms that might be dangerous, a bear or a wolf or something like that. But um um, I'm gonna have to. I'm trying to catch up in the chat here. If I skip over, sorry. Messed up the months resetting my sundial. <laughs> uh, got another run out of the maples. They were confused. Humans are like a splice species too. No, no, and no. Again, more ridiculous fantasy bullshit. Humans are very clearly genetically part of the family tree with all the other primates. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I again, you're in some kind of fantasy land. I don't know who you are. We never seen you here, or unless you're under a, another name and you're trolling us. I mean, you gotta be a troll. The stuff you've said so far has been so utterly goddamn ridiculous. It's just, it's hilarity. Absolute hilarity. Uh, Vermont. Going to Vermont. 
Why on earth would a species intelligent enough to travel light years want to stick a probe up your ass? Exactly. Exactly. It's just some ridiculous bullshit, you know. But if, if there is another race of humans and those greys are actually humans here, I don't know. Maybe they want to do medical experiments on us, you know. I, I, I don't know. Or or it's just a, a big government load of, you know, a, a government program for some stupid reason. Or people are just hallucinating, basically. They're seeing shit that isn't real. Jaunt, jaunt into your spot. You just says the pedestrian, the predestination theory is possible. Humans could be a self created species from their own future using Occam's razor. As you said, it's more likely alien. No, no, no. Predestination is even more ridiculous than aliens being involved. Are you, is this the best trolling you can do? Is this the best trolling you can do? Because this is hilarious. Squatch Talk says, you can travel into the future, but no way to the past. Exactly. Pat knows. Pat knows. Like, it's just, it's really kind of logical, you know, um, because we have seen variations in, in uh, the passage of time. And, and, and what, what's going on is, it, again, what you, what you all need to do if you want to try and get some kind of, which you're not, you're, you're going to, you're not going to be satisfied because it's kind of mundane. It's not, fantastical but basically in a field you know like a magnetic field or any kind of field the entire, everything in the universe is basically made of fields and and even things that they call particles that are actually fields or you know anyway ken wheeler explains it in his writings and on his channel um so if you want to go dive into that y'all can but basically within a field time travel the time passes at different rates at different points in a field. So there you go. So I don't know if you could create an extremely strong field, manipulate the field somehow. And then, and then by standing within a certain point, I, I don't know. I'm not going to hold my breath for it. It sounds like it's probably, probably I should just ride out time at the speed it's going and call it good. But you know, how about this? If we think evolution is a real thing, are humans still evolving and could they evolve into the grays? What I think happened is, okay, well, for, for one, let me make sure that I'm very clear about this. If grays are real and if Sasquatch is real, okay, I'm saying if because there's a possibility both are completely not real, but if they are, judging by what we kind of know right sasquatch is probably homo sapiens and it's just a big hairy race of humans not a separate species there's there's certain similarities in the morphology that that i i i can't i'd find it extremely unlikely that they would be a separate uh species entirely and and also the fact that they are uh, you know they may be extremely elusive but you know, a, a, they, they, well, clearly they are extremely elusive, but they're, but, but, you know, like a, a mountain lions are very elusive. Sometimes a mountain lion is sneaking around your house and in your bushes all the time and you never see it. But then people see it on a, on a security camera when they're like, why the hell? It's like that cat's probably been there forever. You know, they're, they're extremely elusive. They're good at not being seen by humans, but we do see them sometimes and we, you know, but imagine being, that elusive or even more elusive and also having the intelligence of a human well now you got sasquatch possibility there you know but and then so so if sasquatch is real it's i think it's a race of humans and if the grays are real i also think they're a race of humans and that they have already differentiated from us you know thousands of years ago in the case of the grays sometime before thirteen thousand years ago in the case of bigfoot sometime earlier than that i think but it you know and i'm, I'm just saying thirteen thousand years ago because i have a feeling that you know that's i don't want to it's a big tangent to go on but um anyway and, and and you know that's you know they haven't evolved into a separate species i don't think if they if they're real but 
there's not enough data to really know any of this. So let's be clear about that. Um, but that's what I'm saying is that our uh, human humans have diverged already into three different types, the grays, our type of human and Sasquatch. And they're all still the same species. They're just different races. You know, we see our little differences of black and white, right? We have black and white. We call it races. Black and whites are actually extremely similar genetically. Like you would, you'd be really surprised. Uh, we have our genetic differences, but you know, uh, they, but different races could have greater genetic differences than that. Like with me, Neanderthals have now been proven to be the same species as us. I have Neanderthal DNA. You have Neanderthal DNA. That race of people got blended back into the rest of humanity, and that could only happen if they're the same species. So, so I, I think that's already happened, uh, Kaiju. That the the, uh, the 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 Grays and the Sasquatch have already that they, they happened thousands of years ago, where they. Uh, uh, differentiated from us there was the selective uh selective breeding possibly not possibly natural selection would not be the appropriate thing to call it because it may not have been 100 percent natural humans started guiding their own uh, uh breeding a long time ago in in many ways so so how how much is nature in there nature's in there to some extent but it could be minimized Superman done it. <laughs> Fiction. Uh, I'll be up in a long trail this summer. Maple harvesters will be double dipping this year. This is the P Pasca Gola alien abductions. You can watch the whole story on Netflix. <clears throat> been a minute, Pat. I'll be lurking in your chat lately. Good shows. Uh, Appalachian Gap, call me coordinates. Vermont trip. Yeah, when are you going live again? You don't know. He don't know. He, he's random. Kind of like me now. I can't do Saturday nights anymore. I can't do any night in particular reliably. So, because I don't know what my schedule is. That's what sucks about this whole. All, that's one thing that sucks about this whole change. I've. I've in my life so 20 miles want to know if bnc got bigfoot experiences at that florida get together so I says i'll get that video done for you pat i had to start on my current one editing app couldn't handle all the info in a short period of time pause it i'll explain and bigfoot there's no proof of it yeah i know there's no proof of any of it <laughs> Mr. Lee says, Tim Boy Cool. Never did see aliens with pinchers for hands. Good. I got rid of Netflix. Great butt talk. Don't forget the aliens. I mean, this year has been uh, shoulder doing, or should I ask? 50? 50? Heard about that spot. Lots of reports. I mean, how far behind am I in the chat? Math was your best subject, huh, Mr. Lee? Shoulder, great. Hiking. Rubbish at maths. User says, you don't have rabbit cryptids or hummingbird cryptids. They are all the big top predator species. Yeah, because humans, are they're not going to make up a... Well... You say that, but, you know, like, is the Easter Bunny a rabbit cryptid, you know? <laughs> anyway, humans are going to tend to have fantasies about respectable, vicious animals, right? Something scary, tell the scary stories, you know? Right, is that where the defended the Air Force radar base was? Defunded. <clears throat> you're gonna need to jump in here <laughs> you might have to I, my voice is fucked
Well, hold on. I got I got a lot of shit. I still got I got two more things, and and this last one's a long one because. And, and this ain't the last one. This ain't the last one. I don't know. I, I've already been on for two hours. Maybe. Well, Mr. Lee, um, I'm telling you, the Malaysia flight stuff, you've got to see. I, if you haven't seen this, the, um, the plane was surrounded by orbs and sucked into a fucking portal. But we're going to look at this one first because I get, this is the next thing on my list. And then, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then we'll look at the Malaysia Airlines thing. And then, um, oh man, can we do it another night? Because I real, I was really trying to help him wrap this sucker up. I've been on here for two hours, and my voice is gone to hell and i still got the two two topics that i've been trying to go through so this was the alien mummies um the peru I, see i'm wondering why is the peruvian officials trying to seize this pregnant specimen supposedly pregnant specimen three fingers and toes Strain out of a sci-fi, a, a, a scene straight out of a sci-fi thriller or a press conference showcasing alien mummies took a bizarre turn after Peruvian, Peruvian authorities attempted to seize a pregnant new specimen. As part of the event hosted by ufologist Jamie Mousen in Peru, a new alien specimen named Montserrat was presented to those in attendance. Mousen, 70, known for his prolific research into extraterrestrial phenomena, had previously made headlines by presenting two alleged mummified aliens found in Talpa and Nazca in Peru in 2016 in the Mex at the Mexican con Congress uh, uh, in 2023. 20, uh, the ufologist has been claiming there is defin definitive proof on the so-called tridactyl mummies due to them having three fingers and toes for several weeks. Now, seven months on, he's unveiled his latest discovery, a mummified being named Montserrat that is claimed to have been pregnant at the time of her death. I don't know. It looks like plaster shit to me. But who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I thought, I thought this stuff had been debunked, though. Expecting a tridactyl fetus now affectionately named by his ref Raphael. They named the fetus. Dramatic turn, press conference to interrupt, but interrupted by officials, the Peruvian Ministry of Culture, who stormed the event with the intention of seizing Montserrat's mummified body. Why would they seize the, why would they want to see, see, that makes me wonder what's, something's up, something's up here. Accompanied by specialized police officers, officials interrupted a speech given by researcher and journalist jo Joes Mantilla to take control of the microphone. The official said, sorry for the interruption. We are taking an unexpected preventative action with the Ministry of Culture and the Specialized Cultural Heritage Police regarding the exhibition of the tridactyl mummies that you have reported on social networks. But in an even eerier twist, plans to confiscate Montserrat's body were halted after stunned ministry officials learned that the physical mummy was not present at the event. Instead, Mawson and colleagues were carrying out a video presentation on the tridactyl mummy, which resulted in officials being invited to watch the 15-minute long video with the audience. The presentation involved analysis by forensic od odontologist and uh, retired professor at the University of Colorado, John McDowell. He was accompanied by William Rodriguez, a forensic anthropologist for Maryland State Medical Examiner, and James, or Dr. James Caruso, a medical examiner based in Denver. So what the what the hell is the deal here? Are they going to have any conclusion or? I mean, this just could be a, 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 if these are real, which I don't know that they are, if they're, if they're real, they, 
probably just a a mutate you know some kind of mutation like there's a a, a genetic uh abnormality called uh lobster claw syndrome that results in you know your fingers and your toes getting welded together and that's why they call it lobster claw syndrome because it, it looks weird and uh that's the origin uh, that's why the ostrich foot people there's a tribe called the ostrich foot ostrich foot tribe they have lobster claw syndrome it's a genetic deformity the guest speakers concluded that the mummified bodies are to undergo further investigation and cannot yet be dismissed as fake. Officials maintain that the bodies are dolls made of human bones, which are likely to have been dug up by grave rock looters to sell on the black market, as reported by Need to Know. Science writer Mick West said there are many reasons why the Peruvian government might want to take action against Jamie Mawson's alien mummy. He added, grave robbery, grave robbery illegal transportation of human remains, smuggling of archaeological artifacts, fraud. We'll have to wait to see. So it could be just that. It could be they're fake and it's just all a big freaking scam. And I don't know. Let me jump back over on StreamYard. Um, where was I? Send it. I, I don't know. Uh, hold on a second. Patience. We'll get them on. Just let me know. Like, what did you want to talk about this subject specifically? Is that what was it we were talking about? Um, I really want to get into this Malaysia stuff, and it's kind of long. I don't know. Um, I could I put patience, Donald. Yes, it has moved on. Never take shop lessons from a three-finger teacher. What the fuck? Oh, shoot. More crazy shit. Chinese balloons case closed. Shit. Was there sure some similar creatures, pyramids, gargoyles? I mean, we could do... Stolen images before this nonsense. Bigfoot King stolen images. Hold on, let me uh, let me get some light on the situation. Hold on, I'm getting the uh, getting the link. I get because I ain't gonna go. It's gonna take a while to uh, there's there's the link. There's the link. I'll just put off the Malaysia thing because it's it's gonna be it'll take a long time to uh. Let me get that off of here. Let me. Sh Let me get some light on the situation. Is all I know. Um. Just a second. Unless you don't, don't mind it being dark. Um. Saying it happening to me and Max Bigfoot. We just heard weird mumblings out there. Oh shit, what the hell? Oh <coughs> damn it. Been going on through different there's there's weird typo user. Is that Bigfoot driving tractor? Video on YouTube that Sherry Wild talks about abduction. Mumbling had tones like Charlie Brown's teacher, but Draper vocal and mix with that cousin IT and slow it down. What? Deeper vocals. So is is Pat still here?
do I have to take this other deal off here? Maybe that's what it is. Um, yeah, I don't want to be on much longer. The Malaysia thing will take a long time. It's some, it's some wild, it's pretty wild shit. If it's real, it's some wild shit. So maybe we'll do it next week or something. Uh, two different vocals. Mike Ann is running what we recorded through some apps that can't. What? Homo sapiens on a bird. Is Pat still here? I don't see him coming up. Which which part did he want to talk talk about? Was it the alien theories or or the time travel or Whistles and math pops, then a long a whoop sound. Whoop. Got a whoop as well. I don't think Locke knows what you're talking about. Got a whoop on his recorder down there. Yeah, I probably don't. I don't know what you're talking about. He had to put whiskey on ice. What? <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? Mr. Lee says, Lockbeard, can we do a whole show on a Malaysia thing? I guess we can. I mean, it, it, there, there really, there's, there's a lot of video to look at and go through. So it's probably the best thing to do. I just, it's just, it's fucking wild, man. Probably not aliens. Oh, there! I see him coming. There yeah. he is. <laughs> hey, hey, here I am. There he is. Welcome. So, what was it you were wanting to comment on, dude? Actually, dude. Okay, so I want to jump in and talk to you about time dilation. If we could spend okay. like a minute or two on that, at least. Yeah. And and then like move on from there, like obviously. But yeah, I mean, fuck, fuck the dumb mummy shit. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because because I know there's other things, you know, whatever we can talk about. But um, hold on, let me put the cam back up. The funny thing is that Pete is Pete is right there. Look at him; he's humping the blankets. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Dude, blanket humpies! Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Um no, so like time travel is a real thing. Um and uh so like uh Tristan had asked, you know, like you know, you know, time travel in the past, is that possible? And and you're you're like, no fucking way. And I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> like that's that's not a thing. Like you can't there's there's not even a like a what a speck there's not even a quantum speck of science to hold on to um to start talking about traveling like back into the past right yeah we, the amazing thing is that we could travel into the future it's it's time dilation that's a real thing and there are actually time travelers among us how many of you know this and know this is not a crazy lockbeard show the moon is full of cheese kind of fucking shit i'm talking about here <laughs> there are actually time travelers among us they walk among us in in our world right now they traveled literally into the future and this is um fascinating shit dude um it's basically the further and faster you travel away from the earth the more the more time slows down for you Rel relative to everybody else on earth right 
you're familiar with this, I'm sure. Yeah. Lock. Yeah. And yep. so, so we're all traveling through time right now. It's just that we're all traveling through time pretty much the same. We're moving through space. We're moving through the universe. We're moving around the galaxy. We're moving at a certain speed. There's certain uh, curvature in our space time that's around us because of gravity. Um, and, and so all those, like all those factors come into play. Um, <coughs> we're, we're all doing it the same. But if you just get outside of that bubble just a little bit and go a little bit faster and a little bit further, you, you literally, I think the world record lock is something like two or three seconds into the future. A human, yeah. has, it, it was the guy that was on the International Space Station yeah. for two, like two years. Yeah, I, I don't know what the exact amount was, but yeah, he, he experienced different time than we did. Yes. So and all uh, the astronauts too. Right. And and that's documented if if you believe it. Uh right. So one could just say, Oh, that's bullshit, like you know, flat earth. No, the earth's flat. It's all bullshit, right? There is no inter international space station. Um, but no, for real. So this is fascinating to me. Yeah, like, well, wondering how far how far we can push it. Uh, to what? To travel yeah. into the future? Yeah, you know, or yeah, how you, far we can push the potential in time? Oh, you know, ugh, amazing, to, like planet, to, planet of the fucking apes type shit. Like, right? Oh shit! Yeah, but once you're like, there, so all you have to do is though. figure out. All you have to do is figure out how to move it at near the speed of light. Let's just say, you know, whatever, just below the speed of light. And you could send people thousands and thousands of years into the future. Like thousands of years into the future. It would like, you know, to just go what? Shoot off into the galaxy this way. Go check this thing out. Come back. And in their lifetime, their lifetime relative to like us. They fucking, you know, they just spent whatever, you know, like. I don't know, a lot like a thousand hours out in space. They come back. I, I don't know the exact equation. They come back to Earth and it's hundreds of years in the future. And that's how yeah. time dilation actually works. If you can move almost at the speed of light, you you got to be yeah. really up there in the, the percentage of moving that fast. They had an episode of the of the Orville. Did you watch that? The no. the, the Orville? It was Seth MacFarlane's kind of Star Trek parody show. And there was an episode where they ended up back in time and they were stuck there. But somebody came up with the idea. They had a device. I can't remember what they called it. They had a device on their ship that protect them from the differentials in time. So all they had to do was turn that off and then go really fast to get back to the future where they wanted to be. Right. And basically the same thing, you know. Looks like Kaiju still thinks we can travel back in time, though. He says those beans might have figured out how to tra time travel back in time, but that's not yeah, possible. I mean, I mean, that's history. just saying, though. I yeah, mean, I, that's just saying. Uh, so as far as traveling backwards in time, like I said, dude, there's not even one quantum piece of any fucking evidence or hope or nothing that you could ever travel back in time. But we know that we could travel into the future. We know how that's done. It's theory of relativity. It makes that possible. And there's there's nothing to hold on to or even believe in other than magic. Who doesn't want to fucking go back in time, man? Every single human... How many human beings are on the planet? Well, the, like the, eight, eight there's billion? There's no way that doesn't break the universe. Do what? How, like, there's 8 billion fucking Sorry? people on the planet. Each one of them wishes they could go back in time. <laughs> right? So the, the motivation for trying to figure out how to, like, turn the clock back is pretty high with humanity. And we haven't even... It's not that we've even come close. 
Um, it's that any reasonable, intelligent, even highest level academic looks at it and says just what you said. Eh, it would break the universe. Like you just, there's not enough energy in the universe to actually make that happen. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, a proper analogy for it. I mean, it's like you it, traveling through times like you just jumped off a building, right? You're, there's only one way you're going to go. You can't go backwards, you know? And I, yeah. I don't know how best to you're, explain it. Every time you job, jump off the building, you're going to die. You're, you're going to fucking die or get seriously hurt, right? You'll never, uh, ever just raptor. magically in your head raptor, go, raptor. you know? Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, uh, where's Raptor's the evidence? asking the same question he asked about everything. Earth. Yeah, where's the evidence <laughs> of what? Um, there is no evidence that we can travel back well, in time. He needs to look to mainstream science for all that. Yeah. Uh, there I, is no I guess evidence. That like, I don't. I don't have to provide evidence that we can. You know. You know. You know. Raptor. That's a strong. Internet. Is he? Uh, he put. Wait a minute. Yeah, there it just is. yeah, it just fucking happens. Like my bandwidth, my bandwidth just fucking like will die in a, a split second for like every now and then. But no, I just like honestly, lock I. Because you were talking about time travel and you were getting you were getting that right. You're like, nope, you can't go back in time, but yes, you can go into the future. Like, I, I'm sorry, I'm just I'm a science fucking nerd. And <laughs> I love I love the idea of traveling into the future. And and what's crazy is that most people don't understand that number one, there's actual like time travelers among us. Albeit, you know, not significant, right? It's not all that yeah. significant. Yeah. But every astronaut that's gone into space is a fucking time traveler. Like, they traveled into yeah. the future, technically, even if it's in microseconds, right? And yeah. most people don't realize that. And I'm like, hey, let's build the fucking whatever thing we need to build to shoot people off at, you know, almost the speed of light because you can't break it that we know of right and uh and well let's let's do that fucking like that amazing five year 20 year 100 year ten thousand year like travel into the future let's do that like as a species holy shit we would advance like incredibly so fast you know what what if you get to the future and it sucks well, yeah, like Planet of the Apes, right? Bigfoot took over. Yeah. No! You, you ruined it all! <laughs> 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 like, yeah. And the, you just fucking you use your knowledge to kill every one of them. You pull out your 12-gauge and start uh, blowing their faces off. <laughs> 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 Damn it! Yeah, I mean, I'd be that's what what I'd be worried about if that if we ever ever had a technology for it, I'd be worried about that. Well, if we get to the future and it sucks, and then we go further and it still sucks, and no matter what we do, it always sucks, and we were better to stay home, but we can't go yeah. back. It's an interesting thought experiment, and you're right, we can't go back because again, every human being on the planet has the desire to go back and fix something. Right. Yeah. All of us do. We wish we could. No human being has even come close to figuring that out. Um, but we can go forward. And yeah, you're right. I mean, it's the artistic thing too, right? It's just, I don't know, 20 years. Like what, it, you know, what's, what's weird about that to you? Uh, probably a <laughs> lot, honestly. But like to say 2000 years, like, I, I wouldn't even want to wrap my head around that. I mean, that's like saying, 
pluck a Roman soldier from 2,000 years ago and throw him into modern day world, like he he would just fucking lose his mind. He would go cuckoo for cocoa puffs immediately. He wouldn't know what to make of airplanes and cars and and how people look and you know. And that's advancement. So you're you're yeah. saying the other thing. You're saying like again the Planet of the Apes. What if we fucked it all up? Nuclear war, yeah. you know, whatever. Um. Yeah. So, like, honestly, yeah, dude, that, that's the thing that tickles my fancy um, more than anything is talking about real science, like actual science. Pete, stop fucking like, Pete's over there humping the blanket, man. This, this is space. We lost you for a second again. That's okay. It happens. That's not the first time I've been told that. <laughs> um, in, in the, the movie, The Time Machine, because he wanted, he, I don't know if everybody saw that, he went back in time to try and save his girlfriend. And every time could. he saved her, she, she would end up dead anyway. You know, same thing. Yeah, something so, would happen. Of course, yeah. in reality, in, yeah, in reality, though, you couldn't even do that. That's what I'm saying is, is that they're, they're, they, he did learn the lesson that he needed to go to the future to find the answer to whatever he needed. And the answer was Correct. he had to let it go. But yep. you can't, you can't, if you, it, because you know, you remember, like he remembers she dies. If he goes back in time and stops her from dying then he never experienced her dying so he doesn't remember her dying paradox drive right? him to build yeah. this time machine in the first place and exactly yeah there's always paradoxes and people don't get it you can't it would never work even if you could but you can't yeah. because you're going upstream and it, it doesn't work my second favorite f14 movie the final countdown I don't know if I've seen that one. Um, Charlie Sheen. Uh, and Dude, I can't remember the other actors. It's where the aircraft carrier goes through a portal and is 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 literally zapped back to December 7th, uh, 1941. And oh, they so have yeah. a modern day aircraft carrier with F-14s to go fight the fucking Japanese invasion. Oh my gosh. It's called the final countdown. Yeah. Yeah, I it, don't it, recall. Uh, this is a movie that. from the eighties. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I there's there's a sci I guess there's a science fiction movie I missed somehow. Dude, it's it, uh, Charlie Sheen stars in it. Like uh, is it Charlie Sheen or is it oh Jesus Christ, dude? I'm getting confused on my Sheens. Um I think it's Charlie Sheen. He was one of the stars. Um, uh, yeah, Kirk Kirk Douglas and Martin Sheen. My bad. Kaiju's got it. He's got it. Yeah. Kirk Douglas and, and Martin Sheen. Um, 1980. Yes, it was literally this movie wrapped around the idea of uh, a portal opens up and a modern-day aircraft carrier is like suck through it and shows up in uh you know on December 7th 1941 where the Pearl Harbor you know Japanese invasion and so they have to decide whether they in want to intervene or not and there's actually a fucking scene dude I'm not kidding you um that was legitimately filmed with the F-14 dogfighting with the Japanese Zero. Uh, like, really? legitimately. Yes. So, I mean, Japanese Zeros were, you know, they were recovered and re restored. They they still yeah. exist to this day. Um, and, of course, back then, it was 19, you know, 1980 or whatever, like, F F-14s were the dominant, um, you know, air-to-air, -air, you know, carrier protector. And they actually filmed a Jap uh, fucking 
dog, uh, dog fight between a, a F-14 and a Japanese Zero. Did they break the yeah. universe? No. No, no. I mean, a, a Japanese Zero can totally outturn an F-14, believe it or not. No, I mean, like, well, F-14 is there... faster, but the Jap, you know, any any plane like that, even a P-41, could way outrate a fucking F-14 F or F-18 or even F- Maybe not F twenty two because they have thrust thrust vectoring, but I mean, was there a yeah. par did, the, did they cause a paradox in the movie or? I mean, uh, no. I mean, the movie just kind of played out the way it was. They uh, they just basically they made a decision like we are the American military, so therefore it's our responsibility to protect the country. You know, no matter what time we're in. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they launched the fleet to go stop the invasion or the attack. Right. And then, oh, the fucking thing showed back up and they had to call them all back. And that was the big drama trying to get every single, you know, modern so fight. Yeah. So something happened to prevent them from changing history. Yeah, they never changed history. Yep. And And there were two people in the the movie from like our time right in the storyline there were two people in a sort of a little side thing that happened where they got caught in the past and so at the very end they show up as like very old and uh they had got caught back there was only two people that got caught in the past it was a it was a man and a woman you know hmm yeah dude it it's a fucking it's a it's a great movie and I love I love the idea of all of that but yeah you can't actually you know you can't actually do that dude I wish I wish I could go in the past I'd, I'd go buy Apple stock in 1980 like yeah seriously <laughs> yeah a thousand a thousand dollars you'd be worth 25 million I lo I looked it up <laughs> yeah You'd, yeah. be, you'd be worth 25 fucking million dollars right now if you bought a thousand dollars in Apple stock in 1980. Yeah. I, I, I so, or, or even something like Bitcoin. I mean, at some point it was eight cents and then it, I, I sold all of mine, what I had when it was hit 65,000. But, but who can imagine something that started out at eight cents would end up, well, it was lower than that, end up at $65,000. Yeah, it's crazy. But at first, you know, I thought like a lot of people, I was like, ah, oh, this is some bullshit. Yeah, man. Fuck Pearl Harbor. I want lottery numbers. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want uh, winning, yeah. winning uh, uh, baseball teams and Super Bowls and, you know, like, like total, yeah. uh, like back to the future you know, kind of like sports yeah. almanac kind of shit, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. They, hey, that's, they, and they said it in the Avengers, the Avengers movie. So back to the future's bullshit. And that whole scene in the, in the Avengers movie. I, I don't remember that scene. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah. It, it's, that. it's where they're talking about, they're talking about going back in time to, to, uh, to uh, get the stones. Yeah, right. And there's a scene here where they start talking about different science fiction movies. And at some point, Ant-Man says, so Back to the Future's bullshit? <laughs> you know, because they're talking about how time travel works really in the Marvel Universe. Right, yeah, yeah. Which and which was a, like, it's kind of weird because he, well, I guess he was talking shit to somebody like, uh, you know, like Iron Man or, or Hulk or somebody. And because he was trying to tell them, Hey man, I went back in time, you know? Uh, well, no, um, it was before. Well, well he was, tr no, or he we, traveled, he tr traveled he through was, time. Yeah. He was trapped. Well, time, like he was trapped in the quantum realm. It was right. five years for everyone else. But it was only, I can't remember, Seconds. like minutes yeah. or something for him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so 
technically, I guess that's time travel, you know, but, um, well, yeah, just like time yeah, dilation. He, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he, but he had, he had a, a different idea of how time travel worked compared to what Hulk and, and the other lady was telling him, no, it works like this. And, you know, and I'm like, this, it, well, time they figured it out, didn't they? They figured it out. All I know is in science yeah. fiction, every time time travel comes up, I'm like, God damn it. I'm sick of I time travel it. stupid. I mean, I, I, I like it, it sometimes, but they overuse it. And it's always, I'm always kind of pulled out of it because in my mind, time travel in the past is, is a ridiculously fantasy concept, you know? Yeah, but sometimes fantasy's fun, dude. Like, well, I like fantasy, you, but you you remember the um, <coughs> I can't remember the name of it. it was Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock, where they were they were exchanging letters with each other through time, and that did in, involve uh, time travel to the past. You know, it it was it was a wonderful story. Like it was it was a great like you know, portal, if you will, to open up for science fiction to, it wasn't a science fiction movie, but it was, it was a, it was a lot, kind of a love story movie. Great That's movie. <laughs> yeah. And, and then of course, like Star Trek, dude, like, what was it? Um, what was it? It, it was one of the, the, uh, like, uh, next generation movies where they, they had to like, chase the Borg back into time to yeah. keep the, keep the Borg from, uh, they, they were trying to, uh, ruin, you know, humanity basically at that point. So they had to go back and fight that, you know, like again, back in time kind of thing. Uh, somebody said earlier, Superman, Superman, you know, go, went, went back backwards. in time to go say, save Lois Lane, you know, well, right. Yes. The lake house. He spun. Kaiju's got it going on. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, they, in Superman, though, he was spit. I he felt like the were, world backwards, and somehow that yeah. made it go back in time. Uh, yeah. yeah I don't understand. Yeah, that. They yeah. weren't really. They weren't really trying to portray dilation there. They were. They were. Well, doing no. Some I mean, well, that's bullshit. the thing. I mean, so the thing about going back in time is this, right? So we're we're moving through through space and time right now as we speak it like unbelievable speeds like we're the earth is rotating around the sun and the sun is rotating around a galaxy and yeah. kind of like an up and down pattern right so we're we're literally traveling through our own galaxy right now to go back in time means you You'd have to be wherever the fuck the Earth was then, not here, not now. So you literally have to. That's a portal to another position, not yeah. just a time. Yeah, and and this happens every that. split second. Yeah, and our yeah. galaxy, our galaxy is traveling through the universe. So, like this, this position gets like so distant, so. Like every split second, literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if if there, if there was, so that's another thing that kind of takes me because when when you do you always stay, you know, is there some kind of function of the universe that makes you stay in the same position relative to the mass of the Earth? You know, then maybe that might make sense. I don't know, but to me, like if you pop out time, like you said, everything's moving. If, if people are popping out of time all the time off the earth, there's probably a trail of bodies through space forever. You know, it, it just don't make any, I, I, I don't know how that would work. So I don't know if you'd have yeah, to, I mean, to go back in time, it's, well, you literally have to go back to the position where the galaxy was, mm -hmm. the sun was in the galaxy and the earth was around the sun. If you wanted yeah. to say, Hey, I want to go back to 1862. Yeah. Okay, that's a fixed position in space that no longer, no longer exists with the planet. Like, not even close. You know, even that, 
even just that short, relatively short amount of time, you know, we've mill we've gone trillions of miles past that. Um, yeah. And into a, a different fixed position in the universe. Um, as far as like time dilation goes and, and saying, hey, you know, I want to go here and travel at the speed of light and do the future thing. You can use math to calculate where the Earth will be to get back to. Just like you can calculate how to get to the fucking the cheese filled moon, you know, like New Newton's laws of gravity are pretty solid on that. Just even even Newton's laws of gravity. That math works out. So um, it's not hard for us to mathematically calculate the movement of a uh, heavenly body bodies, even our own, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, it, that's just fascinating shit to me. Like, oh, yeah. I, I kind of felt compelled to, you know, talk to somebody about it. Um, so, so if they find a way to send you 500 years in the future, you're going. <sighs> never say never. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, what am I, Matthew McConaughey, man? Come on. What the fuck? I, dude? I mean, yeah, you know, maybe. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. I, dude, I watched a fascinating podcast last night. Um, cause I went to bed early and then I woke up like early morning anyway. And, uh, so I need something to do to keep myself occupied. And it was Lex Freeman talking to like a whatever. Somebody that knew what the fuck they were talking about with all this shit. And they're talking about like crazy cool shit about like telescoping off the sun and shit. Like using the the gravitational lens of the sun, which is a real thing. Again, that's how E, 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 e equals MC square was proven. Um, and, and like looking like hyper, you could hyper focus into space, like with a telescope that uses the gravitational lens of the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you would have to put it so far away, like, like really, really, really far away. Um, not, not like in earth orbit or anything. It was fascinating shit, dude. I don't know. I'll, I'll send you a link, man. You, yeah. You'll I'll dig it. I think you'll fucking dig it. Uh, I I see Lex Fe I see I watch Lex Fe Friedman every so often when he's got something interesting on there. Well, um, this one was this one was interesting, dude. And honestly, I don't I don't know how old it was. I don't know if it was like a brand new one or it was something for two from two years ago because I think it it just auto played. You know? <clears throat> so I don't know. Yeah. But I I sat there and listened to the whole thing, man. I was like, God damn, this is fascinating shit. You know, unlike Bigfoot, which really isn't all that fascinating. <laughs> um, you have a whole channel based on Bigfoot. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I have a channel uh, called Squatch Talk that's based on the Bigfoot subject. Um, But honestly, dude, I mean, I could sit here and talk to you about space and time <laughs> And the, the, you know, possibility of aliens. Like, I could sit here and have this conversation is way more interesting to me than, eh, it's Bigfoot in Australia. Eh, you say, yeah, I say you no. Be. You might be. And that conversation is just really not going to go anywhere, you know? Um, well, or is the aliens going to go anywhere? That, for that matter, I mean. Or, or aliens. Yeah, because I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in aliens, you know, like they have no, like how the fuck they get here. How do they figure out like something different from the laws of physics, which are pretty solid, but you know, like, like, I don't think, I don't think there's one fucking alien that's ever been around this planet. I don't think there's ever one. Uh, fucking, you know, extraordinary aircraft that's ever visited this planet from another world. There's no proof of it, zero proof. Um, so like it, it, it just all, it all becomes the same convoluted narrative, 
you know? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I mean, I, I question what, what their motivation is. Cause you, you have like, what well, was a Sitchin who said they, they came here to enslave humans, to mine gold. Well, that don't make any damn sense to me. You know, you could go find a planetary core fragment that's loaded with gold flying through space and just get that. Why would you, there's, Gold is rare on the surface of a planet. Why would you go and spend time enslaving? Like all these reasons, people that they think they come here to breed with us and right, crazy yeah, stuff. Right. Like that. Yeah. And stick things up our butt. Yeah. <laughs> butt talk. Like, no, I, I think yeah. probably if yeah. you're a species that can travel to other planets easily enough that you start doing it, you, you we're probably not as interesting as we think we are. Probably not, but even if we are interesting, then I mean, you're just gonna you're probably just gonna observe. But yeah. then again, see, the problem is that you start projecting our thoughts onto theirs, yeah. And and I think that's irresponsible. You know, they might want to stick stuff up or butt. They you might. Know, you just don't know. People do that. People stick they things might. up up other people's butts, man. All right, so uh, you know, um. <laughs> I just don't know. I mean, they might, but they might. Some sci-fi might have good idea, like you know, Star Trek for all its flaws, might be correct about the prime directive idea. That might be a normal law out in we the don't. universe. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think that would be a bad law to like follow. Let's say, you know, if we if we start exploring the universe in some like capable way that is uh a little different you know might not be a, a bad law mr lee wants to know if you think we are the only intelligent beings in the universe i have no idea yeah we can't know for that, sure yeah i mean the the thing about that is you know i mean the universe is huge and Again, back to this podcast that I watched, like all this shit was discussed and it was very, very intelligent, very articulate and fascinating. Um, is that, you know, I mean, there might, I mean, the universe is big. There might be other conditions that were similar to what happened on Earth. There almost should be. And amino acids. And maybe even bacteria, um, and maybe even you know small um, ocean type, like waterborne sort of anim not animals, but <coughs> whatever, whatever the fuck, like a particle, yeah, like arthropods or whatever. Um, but that doesn't mean that intelligent life ever fucking ever developed on that planet. You know, and they went for a billion years or five billion years until their son went dead. And it was just nothing more than like basic arthropods with no intelligence whatsoever, whatsoever, just instinct, instinct to eat or breed. Um, yeah, it's it's a fascinating uh, thought because we're we're either alone which is incredible and fascinating or we're not alone, which is equally incredible and fascinating. Yeah. You know, uh, both possibilities are, are equally mind blowing. You know, I find it hard to believe that, that we're, that we are completely, cause you know, University is incredibly vast as far as we know, as far as we can observe. We can't observe very far, really. Dude, there's billions of stars in our own galaxy. Yeah. And, and we can look at billions of galaxies. So, yeah, I mean, you kind of start doing the math on that, right? And and even yeah. if we were the first place in the universe that life came from, one asteroid impact spread our little microbes all over the place. So they could go colonize, you know, panspermia, you know, colonize other planets, you know. So life that DNA doesn't have to develop in every planet. It could start at one place and got spread everywhere else. Possibly or or carried there. I mean, again, like 
you can kind of let your imagination, you know, yeah. take over and again project. Um, and that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that because when we when we ponder the vastness of the universe and how big it is, it's uh like we don't know until we know. So it's it, I guess it's okay to you know let let the imagination run wild a little bit, but the scientists, the people that truly want to know, they, they don't really do that. Like they they'll keep themselves in check, you know. Maybe. <laughs> and maybe I mean they make some assumptions. Like, I mean, they haven't actually proven the Big Bang theory. You know, they correct. haven't actually proven that. Correct. And but they they build badass telescopes to show us cool fucking looking nebulas and shit. Like yeah. they do a lot know, of good I stuff. Mean, there's I mean they they don't have a bad track record, is what I'm saying. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I usually like to say, they make uh, lots of good observations, but sometimes their interpretations are off of those of that data. Sometimes, you know? sometimes not, man. I mean, we build, we we do build. Uh, we built a a huge uh, gravitational wave detector, and it, it turned out like we picked something up. You know, um, from like from a neutron star, you know, whatever, 20 million years away or light years away or whatever, like that shit's real, man. Like it's pretty impressive. Yeah. These are smart people. These, these, these aren't delusional people, you know, um, if you go talk to an astrophysicist who's like not on TV all the time, you know, like the, the they're not delusional. Like they're no, fucking, they're highly intelligent. They know what no, the fuck they're, they're talking about. No Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, I mean TV yeah. personality. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he got he got he got a lot of heat here recently because of something he said. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe it, dude. It's just, I mean, um, yeah. I mean, I I th I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like, you, yeah you're talking know. about something specific. Yeah. yeah, you know, and he's like, a fuck. Uh, he's a fucking idiot for saying that. Yeah, he should have just stayed out of it. <laughs> Stay it in was, your lane. It was all people who fucking like looked at him weirdly and challenged him on that. Of all people, was fucking Steve O. Like Steve O was like, huh? What are you talking about? Like, why, like, why are you going, like, on his podcast? Like, all people, Steve-O, like, goofy-ass fucking Steve-O, you know, eat eat a goldfish, throw it back up, back into the tank. Like, that, that fucking dude, or, you know, whatever. <sighs> dude, that shit tripped me out. I know what you're talking about. We, we don't have to talk about it here. Yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't want to get your, your channel into trouble. <laughs> Um, well, I mention that stuff all the time, so I, I just try to yeah. talk in code because YouTube, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I know, and I was I, obviously I picked right up on it. But it's um, it's, just, it's just funny, you know. And yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, and and I, you know, I don't. I think he's, you know, I think you know, because you've probably heard me say a lot of times on here that I think that some of some of the science they're off on their interpretation of things. So, and he's a hundred percent on board. Of, and, and I. And like you said, these guys aren't stupid. I think that they're purposely misleading us about certain things. Some of them. Uh, that happens. I mean, you, you're now you're getting into a way different, like complicated conversation. Yeah, I, know. I, I don't but, think there's a lot of guys looking out into the universe that only fucking care about what are we finding in the universe that we can understand. Yeah, there's there's not a lot of those guys that are going to be misleading about anything, you know, I don't know. Maybe if they discover the Death Star coming towards us, maybe they would fucking say, uh, like, no, nope, uh, we, we don't want to disclose. Like, I get that. But no, nah, man, there, there are people that truly just want to understand the world just, just mm -hmm. like you do, just like I do. Like we you and I perform science. Um, in at least in the same idea of science is like I'm just trying to understand this world, 
you know, and and there's these other people that are high academics and they have tools and technology at their dis disclosure. They get to launch spacecraft in the air to fucking help them study the understanding of the world they live in. Like, no, nah, man, all, all those people are like pretty genuine, good people. Um, uh, and just, I think a lot of them, they just, just talk get to them. Yeah. They get sucked into a situation where they're the funding's coming from a certain place. So they got to be careful what they say. Certain results are expected, you know. I, 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 I mean, it, it just, I mean, when you, when you put a telescope into space and, and you're just observing. Uh, we lost Pat again. Yep, government shut us down. Government shut us down. Can't remember that. Oh, there he is. He's come back. There he is. Yeah, same <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, like, I mean, you know, results. I don't know. I, I, I think it's. I think it's an objective process. I mean, um, you know, science has a under like science recognizes that dark matter is something that's not understood. So, I mean, there you go. Like, there's nobody like squashing the dark narrative matter. No, we can't. We can't have it that you know. There's this thing out in the universe that we don't understand. You know, um, no, no, there is. It's called dark matter. We well, fucking have no clue what it is. Well, None. yeah, you know? but I mean, they yeah, nobody's nobody's challenging that narrative. There's no authority behind it. It's well, truth. It's just science. Yeah, yeah, their their data is telling them something's there, but they're focused on it has to be some kind of matter or the dark energy or you know, all these things that, that they're all negating, like, so like they're negating that there's a substrate behind everything, but then they, they, uh, oh, we lost, did we lose them again? We lost them again. Just go talk to an astrophysicist. Mr. Lee says Raptors lawyers calling is he? The grass is pissed. The grass is pissed. Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah, this is uh, it's so fucking annoying. I don't know why this happens. Um, so I I don't know. I mean, I, I, I I'm pretty sure you probably heard me talk about uh, Ken Wheeler before on here, and he mm. offers an alternative an alternative understanding of some of these areas of science and. It basically it goes back oh, yeah, yeah. that there has to be a, there's a substrate behind the universe that but mainstream science they keep finding data that that shows this but they don't ever want to go back to the idea that the ether exists the, the 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 basic medium of all reality and and so they'll they'll come up with stuff like quantum foam space time you know all these different things when all that really does is point to the existence of the ether. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, again, man, I think, you know, look, the, the people that just want to understand the world better, um, I, I find them to be fairly objective. So, uh, you're talking about sort of outlying, theories or ideas yeah for whatever reason that they would reject because they don't that's not their observation you know so to be fair you know um they do observe that dark matter ex ex is a thing but they have no fucking idea what it is <laughs> you know um, and they're willing to admit that, and that's public information, so nobody's really got their foot on any throat of understanding about 
the world, you know, kind of in the way that, you know, flat earth, flat earthers would say, you know, is the case, right? Um, I just, I, I don't find that to be the case. What, um, well, what, what Ken Wheeler would tell them is that the, what they're seeing is the effects of massive fields, like mag magnetic fields, gravitational fields, that that's what they're seeing. And they're not accounting for that as an added apparent gravitational force, but they're not recognizing that there's a there's a, a massive field in place and what that they're observing. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. That's all that shit's above my pay grade. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, uh, so, uh, I mean, I could. I could opine on that kind of thinking, you know. Um, I'm not I'm not sure what magnetism has to do with gravity. Well, um, it's the same thing. It, it's, I don't think it is. It's it's there there. It's a um. Gra gravity would be a situation where all of your magnetic fields are in different orientations in a mass and magnetism is where they're lined up. What you, what, what most people perceive as magnetism where it's lined up, where you have a clear North and South pole. hundred yeah. percent. But yeah, sure. But we can, and, we can look Earth, at the earth's magnetic field that we yeah. can actually, yeah, we measure, you know, that. when it's all squiggly lined around it and everything like the, yeah. the sun, you, you could see like, magnet the how magnetism works with the sun yeah from solar flares and shit <coughs> that's that's literally the the shaping of the magnetic field of the sun um it, like you know, it, outlined it, yeah but yeah i mean it, it, you know i mean gravity to me is i mean sure you have the attraction so mag you know magnet magnetics attract but they also repel um so yeah in that so, theory in, in that theory repel me off the earth how do you how does that happen like i don't know <sighs> well and, and the substances i like, die you know, the, i die yeah. that's it you, you, you would die Death. yeah and, <laughs> you know substances are normally considered not magnetic but magnetic fields still affect them and it's interesting where certain things they'll they'll go to certain points in the magnetic field and it's just some really crazy effects that most people aren't really aware of and um or consider but sure but basic, they, basically the theory goes that that we magnetism yeah. or gravity is incoherent magnetism well i mean gra like gravity while not entirely understood um is understood enough to predict 100 percent and to uh is understood to be uh is literally a warp it's a it's a warp in space and time you know um well that's what that's what they see that's what that's the interpretation they've come up for what they're observing but but again space is supposed to be nothing and time is just a measurement it's just a measurement so how they put these two things together and come up with the fabric of space time instead of recognizing that there's something uh, else but yeah uh, okay so oh man you're getting in deep shit i know um, <laughs> like so space space time is not just a not just a measurement space time is the fourth dimension like so time is the fourth dimension um no i mean yeah we could look at time as the as a fourth dimension but yeah still it, it's it's not really a thing it's a but it is because of what we talked about earlier with time dilation it's definitely a thing so we're we're all experiencing time right now like together yeah. right even you lock like wherever the fuck you are right now you know I'm in North Georgia. You're wherever the fuck you are in Southeast Oklahoma, Antarctica. Lockbeard's definitely in it in Antarctica. Time is passing, and 
time passes exactly the same for both of us. We can't measure any difference of how time passes. Yeah. So we're experiencing the fourth dimension all together, all 8 billion of us on this fucking sphere, you know, going, nah, right? But you just send one fucking person off, you know, just one person off at the speed of light. And now we have a human being from planet Earth experiencing time completely differently. Um, and they are truly swimming in an actual fourth dimension scenario, um, approaching like fifth dimension, kind of uh, like theoretical fifth dimension kind, kind of situation. Um, and then it goes on and on from there with the, the theories of different dimensions of how how time works <laughs> and how you can experience time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that again, it's above it's above my pay, pay grade, but I do like I know enough about it to be able to like confidently discuss it, you know. Um, you can experience time differently. So like. So with gravity, uh, again, I'll concede we don't actually fully understand gravity, but but we can predict it 100. percent Like it, like those mathematical, uh, our mathematical understanding of gravity is never wrong, or it's never been proven wrong. Again, we yeah. in the 1960s we went to the moon using Newton's laws of gravity. Yeah. So we, just we're able, I mean, we observe. Yeah. We, yeah. We just observe the behavior of it. We, we don't have to know what it is, but we observe the behavior of it and we have to use it every day just to stay on the surface of the planet. You know, it's just kind of a part of life, but doesn't mean we know what it is, or at least well, the mainstream doesn't. But go I'm jump convinced. Off, that, go jump off a building. You'll find that real quick. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's uh it it definitely works it's predictable definitely yeah. works well yeah and so i i, I don't know all I, but you know i look, didn't mean to mess up your show lock i'm sorry oh, you're fine. i really i wanted to talk about science dude like i'm feeling some kind of way tonight i'm like fuck yeah. bigfoot yeah. Fuck like Big Locke's Foot. talking about science, dude. Hey, let's talk science. <laughs> you know, what if Bigfoot's a better scientist than we are? Yeah, I mean, what if, right? I mean that that opens up uh, a lot of doors. Again, with like you know, high speculation. Like, what if they understand? how the universe works better than us well then that that meets the definition of woo does it not well it wouldn't be magical <laughs> woo kind of stuff i i think so i mean like it would it, just it mean depends, they're really it smart it depends on what you're talking about yeah it depends on specifics of what i mean you're talking about you know I, 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 well, I mean, I, I guess if you look at it like uh, any sufficiently advanced science, it would appear magical to a less advanced people. But yeah, but in, in, what, in what way could they be more advanced? Would be something beyond our understanding. So to maybe. me, that automatically puts it in the woo category. I mean, if you if you want to, if somebody wants to tell me that they're just as good as hiding themselves as like the best of humanity being like say baby seals or whatever right like people who are highly trained in hiding because they have a, a specific reason to do that um you know you want to put them on that level well they're still just as natural as us the second it goes beyond that it it goes into something I can't explain. Like, you know. And and, and fucking you talking about octopus are fu are fucking weird. They're weird creatures, man. Um, and they're like amazing camouflage and 
you know, an octopus this big can go through a hole that fucking big. Like, dude, they're they're amazing, capable creatures. But you could pick one out of the ocean and fucking whatever, dude. Like, like stab it in the head. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're they they're not. Well, I've eaten a number of octopus. They're not magical. I've eaten squid. Um. So as magical as they appear, yeah, they. I've eaten are, a lot of octopus. I mean, with Bigfoot, dude, it's it's just simple. It's just, it's like, how many are there? And where, and you know, and how do we how do we observe them or get evidence of them? You know, and and that is a very circular discussion. It just, you know, it just depends on how you answer those questions, you know. And uh, and if one wants to say, if one wants to say, if they just want to go there and say, I think they're fucking mad magical beings from planet Hairtron. And they're in cohorts with the flying spaghetti monster, which you and me lock both know fucking exists, you know, then. Okay. I, then you got me like, I can't like, there's no logic dictation road. I can go down with that. You know, it's like, if they're from planet Hairtron and they're in cohorts with the flying spaghetti monster, then I don't know what to do with that. You know what I mean? There's, there's no road for me to march, but everybody say they... raw man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But are they flesh and blood? You know, are they flesh and blood creatures of this earth? And how many of them are they? Like, that's the, that's the, beginning point of any discussion with Bigfoot. There's no doubt that the narrative is just fucking false, dude. Like, the narrative is out of control bad. You know that. Like, I know you yeah. know that. Yeah. You know, Bigfoot's I mean, everywhere I'm, I'm just, all the time. You know. You know, you, all you, I can do is say yeah. what I think is the possibilities but as far as I know, I don't know for a fact there's one Bigfoot in existence. Me or neither. that they ever existed, really. Because we don't got... Me neither. We don't, we don't got yeah. that body. So, we're kind well, of screwed on that, Bill. I, I think that's a responsible way. I, I, I think that's a responsible statement. But you understand, dude, that when you make that statement, you're, you're like me. You're killing the music at the party. I know it. You're just killing the music at the party, man. You know? Yeah. And it sucks. I, I mean, I, I think it'd be really cool if they're out there, but, you know, and I think there is the possibility that they're out there. But I don't have any real data. Well, you know, I, no shit. Nobody does. <laughs> like, I look at, again, like I brought this up on my show the other night. I said, I don't know, man. Like, the PG film. The PG film is very compelling to me, personally, okay? And I've looked at it objectively, and I just, I don't see a guy in a suit. Like, I see some fucking weird thing, man, right? I'm like, I don't know. Sh she's probably dead. Um, Maybe they all died out. Like, maybe she was the last of fucking 50, you know, in the whole world. Um, but I don't know that, but I'm, I'm throwing that out there as a possibility, but you and I both know the Bigfoot world will never consider that possibility because it takes all the fun out of it because yeah. why, why go on your fucking LBL expedition next weekend? Yeah. If, yeah. if you've come to the conclusion that, well, they might all just be dead and Roger fucking Patterson happened to catch one of the last 100 of them or whatever, you know? Uh, yeah. So, what's the fun of going on a Bigfoot expedition if you're considering they're all dead? Because how, you know, what do you do with the whoops you get that night? You have to admit they're barred owls instead of fucking saying it's Bigfoot. 
that's how fucking stupid yeah. it all this is all gotten you know like nobody's willing to yeah. like have an honest discussion with the subject anymore except people like you and others a uh, very few just very few people you know it's it's always the people that don't like have a lot of money invested you know <laughs> yeah yeah you raptor know. always brings that up they're just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. And I've had his I've had his ass on that lately. Um because I'm like I'm I'm tired of people banning Raptor and chat for being honest and saying what Oh, that's a great story. Where's your fucking evidence? Yeah. And he he always he like uh yeah, that's kind of a good point actually. But again, dude, it's like bam, hit the bam button because ah, you're killing the music at the party, Raptor. Everybody's everybody thinks the guy's being an asshole. He's just making a good point. And uh, yeah. I know I've noticed that long ago. What, 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 what's Donald talk about here? The good chance that Gimlin's manager has the truth, or doesn't? I mean. Yeah. Gimlin yeah. has the truth. Gimlin has the truth. Fuck his manager. But I, I mean, I know what Donald's saying in that. Um, um, big Bigfoot ghost. <laughs> and I just, uh, that's that's not that's that's just not a road I want to march down in public right now, honestly. I, I have my thoughts about it, but look, I, I mean, I made the prediction I made. I, I, I went out into public on my own channel and made the prediction that I made, but I don't, I don't want to opine on it any further because it's actually, it's complicated. I, I think it's, I think it's way more complicated than that. I think it's a money it's a money issue. That's it. It's all about money. It ain't about truth. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's a good possibility. Something might happen, but it ain't about truth, but whatever. I mean, I'm sick of that fucking film anyway, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I, People are keep we keep analyzing it and analyzing it, but I, I really don't think we're we're getting anything else out of it. I, I think we just need to look at it and as it is, original and try not to try not to make any more extrapolation or enhancements and you know but everybody's wanting to do that and keep trying to they think they're gonna get something more out of it and I just don't think they can. I I agree for the most part. Um um, I I say that, but like recently, uh, Lazy Cowboy did a uh, he did a pretty impressive 3D uh, animation rendering. Uh, you know, based based on the film, so it, it it felt legit. It felt, you know, objective, and it it was impressive. But even then, it's like that video probably hit, might might have 500 views. It's like, you know, it's not some game changing thing, but it was impressive to me. I did enjoy it. I, I liked seeing it. <coughs> God damn. <coughs> Where are we at? Uh. I'm uh, just clicking on going down the list. Uh, uh, people, <coughs> Grasshopper said no deathbed confession. <coughs> Don't bring it up. There was a video confession of two people are aware of. I don't know. Oh, uh, well, no, he's talking about the whole. I, I think Donald is talking about what happened back a couple of years ago 
with uh, Steve Coles and Richter, Richter Riola, and uh, Russ, Russell Accord, making them think that. Making them think that. But never actually saying it directly. But somehow made them think that. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> to the point where uh, Steve made a fucking fool of himself. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Richter's talking about. So Ru Russell Accord was f like fucking with Steve's head and Richter's head and made them think that. Again, I don't know if it was directly or indirectly because they both fucking retracted it, dude, is the thing. Even Richter, who doesn't, who doesn't have anything to do with the Bigfoot world anymore, even Richter said, oh, "I yeah, am, you know, whatever. I guess maybe I was wrong about that." Hmm. <laughs> but you know, Coles got down on his knees and made this big apology, and then disappeared off fucking YouTube for fucking two or three months. Um, I'm like, what the fuck he say to you? What what did he say to you? Because Coles was like, I mean, he was really like. He thought he was onto some scoop, man. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Uh, but, you know, I've come to know, I mean, like, like Coles is just like to me and dude, Steve Coles is just, he come, he comes across as the big debunker, but he, he's just as in it, it wrapped up in the narrative is, is pretty much everywhere. Everyone else, you know, so, yeah, he might pick one guy that's low-hanging fruit and go, ah, this guy's hoaxing because look, if you, you know, look, look at this and you look at that and you look at this, he's hoaxing. Okay, that's great. Hmm. What about the narrative, bro, that you participate in every fucking day? <clears throat> every time you go on air? Nope. Nobody's willing to fucking attack the narrative. And that's that's where I'm at, dude. Like that's that's yeah. that's what's bothering me about the the supreme contradictions with the narrative. Um, so uh, Coles is just as guilty of that as anybody. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, Lock? There's Petey. Yeah, I'm Pete. What's up? <laughs> hey, hey, everybody out there in uh, podcast world. I'm gonna. Well, you know my speech, right? About biting Bigfoot. <laughs> Everybody knows I'm gonna bite Bigfoot and get DNA sample for Dobby or cut, right? So, yeah, man. Why don't uh, I don't understand why you people don't bite Bigfoot? Like, why don't you do that? Because uh, he might bite back. <laughs> uh, but I'm a doggy, and I bite Bigfoot. I run off. Say, fuck you, Bigfoot. <laughs> also don't understand why you don't 12 gauge that motherfucker to the face because it would totally drop him it and would totally it, drop him you know it totally would <laughs> well man I need to get off here thanks for uh, hanging out yeah man hey uh, well thanks for having me on again oh. and uh, <laughs> well, anytime anytime and yeah, dude. I mean, again, like I, I, I wasn't kidding. I'd like, I'm like, holy shit. I got a chance to like talk to somebody about science and shit. <laughs> like that's so much more interesting than fucking Bigfoot. Yeah. And how like most things in Bigfoot are absolute bullshit, but we have this thing called science, which like some kind of understanding of things that most people don't even understand. It's like, time dilation like we were talking yeah. gravity and just all like the mystery the some of the mysteries and shit like shit worth figuring out like fuck these bigfoot thing man just just let them let them walk around and whoop all they want <laughs> fuck them just ignore them ignore bigfoot so that's all i have to say lock thanks for having me on i appreciate it, man i'm gonna leave your studio let you wrap it up all right take it See easy bro Bye. See y'all later. Thanks for hanging out.